All right, chat. Let's get let's lock in. Let's get locked in. Already, man. chat. Get ready to be angry. Grab your pop. Grab your snacks. You know what I'm saying? We in for a treat. Y'all niggas gonna get mad. If y'all get mad, don't feel obligated to stay around. If it's gonna if it works your feelings up, she's gonna say it in the video. If, if y'all need time, cool off. Come back. We're gonna have this stream published. Um, no, eventually at some point on YouTube you before joint, so you can pause, skip, rewind, all that shit. So yeah, but it's gonna Wait. piss y'all off. When somebody gigantify your ass, right? They pay 50 cents. Yes. How did do. that look? Because I missed it. Nigga, in my chat, it looked like fucking <laughs> like I was watching that bitch in the theaters. Nigga, I just see ass. What? Like the, the, the emotes? In my fucking face. Bada bing, bada bada boom. For three days in September. Oh, shall I never read the title? The suspicious death of Diddy's ex, Kim Porter. What? And the oh, controversial... Also. Tell all books about Diddy. There is That's this event insane. where the wealthiest people, they just fly in from all over the world to throw $2 billion into the water and just hope it floats. Cross your fingers. Welcome to the annual Monaco Yacht Show. But it's not just yachts being sold here. There's helicopters, personal submarines, luxury vehicles, whatever you're looking for, they have it. The average yacht price sold during the show is on average $30 million per boat which even the 15 to 20 million dollars that's considered affordable that's considered a budget boat I think 30 million is, to get is the good super for yachts, yachts you're looking at nine figures plus yeah. and they're all lined up at the dock for you to view some of them have helicopters that are parked on the helipad on the yacht others have these indoor pools because you're floating in the water but you don't want to go into the water you want to go into the water on your yacht mm. and they have these greek statues just squirting water into the pool they have libraries onboard gardens for billionaires to relax some yachts even have their own wellness centers there's a hyperbaric chamber that's like a new trendy version of what's on a yacht these days it's just when you need a lot more oxygen than what's in the air you go into this one and get pure oxygen that's there's great. medical suites there's mini yachts that you can view the mini yachts Rich they're not shit. really for you to yacht around okay those mini yachts follow your main yacht i said this some this some yeah, nicole yeah, shit right here this got, some nicole shit. yeah this I got, some like, nicole shit. I got like uh this one i got i got four of these ones but the one to the the small joint i don't know what that is but i got the the big one i got like four of those well, Nicole, just hard. Nicole yeah. got like five of these, but it's mm -hmm. yeah. Nicole, Nicole lended me two of them. Nicole was she trying to give me two. one of those for free. Remember, Nicole? <laughs> the cold and they're basically U hauls, they have yeah. storage compartments for jet two. skis. Or if you've got that uncle that just insists on coming, they go sleep on that little floating guest house. All the water toys are there too. Did you know jet skis, top of the line, you're looking at at least $25,000 per jet ski or yeah. personal submarines. I didn't even know that what you could get a fuck? personal submarine. The entry level ones start at just a million dollars. Oh, That's fuck. not even the I luxury ones. You're probably sitting on the floor of the sub. But what's a million dollars when you have a hundred million dollar Oh boat? yeah, I got, yeah, I got two Every of them. single detail on a super yacht is custom made. Five million per seat. Drawer pulls for the nightstand custom made coffee, coffee machines lined with quilted leather vendors are pouring champagne at the monaco boat show trying to convince you yes i mean what else are you going to do with 75 million dollars instead of getting this vessel where do you summer you need a yacht That's, but even in a sea full of cool. yachts there are a few yachts that stand out as world-class boats the Rob Report 2022 has awarded this one a particular award of best of the best in the motor yacht over 80 meters category. It's a yacht called the Victorious, a luxury super yacht built in 2021. It's designed by Michael Leach Design. If you guys know anything about boats, he is like one of the most highly regarded firms in the UK. They're a leading player in luxury yacht design. If you care about every little stitch on your custom made furniture on the yacht, you call Michael Leach Design. They're meticulous. They might not even take your project. They only work on two to three yachts simultaneously. That's it. That's the Victorious nice yeah. collaborated know, with nice Michael Leach yeah. Design and H2 Yacht Designs to make one of the best yachts in the world. It is a $117 million floating vessel that is nearly 300 feet long and sleeps 12 guests across six staterooms. But at most, if you're throwing a party, you can have 24 guests and 30 crew on board at once.
Damn. But if you're like, wait, I don't really have $117 million. Oh, you can charter it 10%. for $950,000 a week. A million dollar a week? A million dollars a week Ouch. during the winter seasons. The summer seasons are actually cheaper at $800,000 a week. That's a fucking scam. Summer is cheaper. Because winter people want to go to the tropical climates on a yacht. Summer, you can go to Nantucket, the Hamptons. Wow, that is very fascinating. The vessel will cruise the Caribbeans and the Bahamas, and during the summers, it just glides through the Mediterranean. It is an entertainer's dream. On board, you've yacht. got a large beach club, a wellness center. It has wood-burning fireplaces. One yacht company said, when billionaires get on yachts of this magnitude, their jaws still drop at the luxury. Yeah, it's much really nicer than a five, six star hotel. I mean, it's crazy. It's a boat. You walk on board. There's uniform staff waiting to hand you a warm towel, likely scented with a delicate a lot, bro. I would never own a yacht, bro. And when you're back from your jet ski adventure, there's staff members that provide yoga classes on the deck, sunscreen required. The and by sunset, you walk over to the dining area where you have fresh food laid out by the team. And then finally, you lay down on the velvety chairs in the cinema while your hair is still crunchy with salt water to decompress press that's what's supposed to happen when you charter the victorious for a million dollars a week how many of y'all own a yacht grace chat? is a 25 year old woman on board as crew for the yacht victorious they had just received news that the yacht was successfully chartered for the winter and they're gonna hit the water this is not just a regular rich family that's what grace is told they're debriefed and they are told this oh, is yeah, a I know you very are, rich Nicole. very famous family I mean, the crew, they're used to working with wealthy individuals and being discreet is very important, but they've never worked with an A-list celebrity before. So before heading into the water, the crew, they're just really excited. They want to make sure that Diddy and his family have a spectacular time. I mean, let's make the holidays amazing for them. That's the goal. It said that they were potentially even filming a Hulu family reality TV show, like Keeping Up With The Combs. But Grace noticed something very strange about The Combs' time on the yacht. She thought it was going to be like a cute family vacation. So why is it that all the girls are coming on board and there's a constant rotation of strangers and other A-list celebrities that are coming on and off board? And strangely, it appears that any time a girl steps foot on this yacht, they get intoxicated after one tiny shot of alcohol. It just doesn't seem normal. People on the yacht would take one shot and just be sprawled out on the deck unconscious. Other what? women would drink one mixed drink and they'd be falling over themselves. They would go have a panic attack. Some of them would just pass out. Grace didn't know exactly what's going on, but she has a sneaking suspicion that the drinks were laced with something. Drugs. And then it happens. December 28th, 2022, she alleges in her lawsuit that she was essayed by Sean Diddy Combs' son, Christian Yo, King Combs. This I is what happens at Diddy's up. yacht parties. I told y'all I know that nigga on something. I know that nigga up to something. Like, ain't no way your daddy do all that. And you ain't gonna play the Lock that nigga up. Put him in big shackles. These big fucking lions in the cage. They gonna lock that nigga the fuck up. <laughs> that nigga look like Quando Dingle here. <laughs> We would like to thank today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support Arizona Anti-Trafficking Network. They work constantly to bring solutions to the illegal sex and human trafficking network in the states. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team. And we would also like to thank you guys for your continued support. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. Now, a big disclaimer to keep in mind with this case. It's currently ongoing and developing as we speak. There have been no court verdicts yet. So unfortunately, I must legally state that these are all current allegations and accusations. People are innocent until proven guilty, legally speaking. Some statements have been shortened for time, and all the theories and speculations mentioned are net as in opinions that can be found publicly available online. All reporting for this episode is taken from information that is online, so please do your own research, form your own opinions. I'm not here to convince you of anyone's guilt nor innocence. Some potentially triggering themes include heavy use of illicit substances, including date R-word drugs, domestic violence, heavy descriptions of SA, gang violence, trafficking and this case is very heavy so please take a break unplug if you need and with that being said let's get into it 
in part one, we did a deep dive on the lawsuit that started all of this with Cassie, the hotel footage, and the Illuminati somehow gets involved. In this part, part two, we're going to go in depth on the lawsuit against Christian Combs, the son, what happens at Diddy Yacht Parties, and the very strange death of the mother of his children, Kim Porter. In part three, we will be going over the 13 people who have mysteriously died around Diddy, which is, there's a very alarming pattern of the way that he reacts and responds in interviews to some of these deaths. It feels odd. And finally, in part four, we will be going through the so-called Diddy's list, the internet allegations, the celebrity friends who are rumored to have been complicit and partaking in these crazy parties, wild accusations that Diddy is a clone in prison, the baby oil is laced, there's tunnels under his house, as well as the 120 people that are working on suing him. And some of them have since filed suit. I will leave a pinned comment for those days that those videos will go up. And with that being said, let's get into it. Out of nowhere, a $22 book hits Amazon's number one bestseller spot for fictional books. I mean, outselling Sally Rooney, Hillary Clinton, Nicholas Sparks, which is unheard of for a debut book. A book. Not only that, it's a pricey book. It's 59 pages for $22. And it's self-published, ranking at the top of the bestsellers list. It's even more fascinating when you factor in the part where the entire book is littered with typos. So why the hell is everybody suddenly interested in this random book? It's titled Kim's Lost Words, A Journey for Justice from the Other Side. At first glance, the book appears to be a memoir. The way it's titled, that's the impression. Kim Porter is the late ex-girlfriend of famous musician Sean Diddy Combs. She's the mother of four of his seven children, and she passed away in 2018. After Cassie's lawsuit, after the feds raid Diddy's homes, after Diddy's son released a diss track on the world, this book is released September of 2024, just like right before his arrest. The book is described as being filled with, quote, alleged disturbing and graphic sexual encounters between Combs and other celebrities. The main allegations spewed in the books are, Diddy had asked Kim, um, how do I say, to use an intimate object for his bottom, and she refused, which resulted in allegedly beating her. That's what's in the book. There are other excerpts from the book that state that Kim witnessed Diddy having intimate relationships with underage male stars in the industry. Another allegation that Diddy allegedly hit Kim with a chair. I mean, the opening line, chapter one, the introduction, is already so salacious. Of course, it's going to get people talking. The opening page reads about Diddy. He was so charming, a wolf in sheep's clothing, a devil, and I fell for it. This story must be told despite the fact that it'll hurt my children. I cannot hide it any longer. Sean Combs must be stopped. So there were other celebrities' names being mentioned in there? So many. Whoa. Other salacious, since gone viral excerpts from the book include, one day I found the vault where Sean kept all of his encounters with men. Yes, he kept a record of it, but that's for later. The book shoots its way to the top of the charts on Amazon, which is crazy, again, yeah. considering it's filled with these typos and some blatantly factually incorrect information. And it's just littered with names of like the biggest names in Hollywood. The timing of the book makes it go viral and it further sparks a huge debate of who's to say if this is her book? Who even published this? Because it's not Kim Porter. Kim Porter passed away in 2018. This book is released in 2024. Oh, yeah. so the book right. says it's Hold written it. by Jamal T. Millwood for Kim Porter. Jamal T. Millwood is not the actual name of the person who published this book. That is the name associated with this huge conspiracy. Decades ago, one of the biggest rappers, Tupac, was murdered. But there's a conspiracy that he's not actually dead. Some people believe that he's alive somewhere, living under a fake name, Man, and go, one of those bro. names is Jamal T. Millwood. But that can't be who published it, right? The real author's name is Chris Todd. He describes himself as a producer, author, investigative journalist. He states that he is the voice for the voiceless, which, I don't know, you take it as you will. He said that he basically solved John JonBenet Ramsey's case, which again, I don't know, okay, but he publishes this book stating that he didn't make this all up, that this book happened to him. He said he never personally even knew Kim Porter. He claims that he received a flash drive that belonged to Kim after her death. He received it from two people that he knows are connected to the music industry. This is what he alleges. For reasons unknown to us, he said, I believe that flash drive. He's like, I believe it to be true. He states on the flash drive, there are also, quote, tapes of Diddy with celebrities in sexual situations. 
I don't know if he has those specifically, but he does state he has photos and other evidence on the flash drive that he has not yet released. So he is just an author? He is a um, journalist, investigator. I mean, or? people, everybody has a different word for him. Some people think he's an investigative journalist. Some people think that he's a conspiracy theorist. Some people think that he's a cash grabber. Yeah, honestly, mm. it I really think depends. He just and he make claims that someone seeked him out. Yes. Even though he's not like a big time famous no. person. So, okay. Yeah, which is interesting because why would you not just send it to, I don't know, the Rolling Stone? Now, right. I guess some people are alleging that they wouldn't send it to big publications because it's alleged that Diddy has a lot of Connections. the big reporters connected to him. Mm -hmm. Now, he only received a portion of this drive with different writings that he said that he had to kind of piece together in a timeline that made sense to create what he believes to be a memoir. That's what he says. He does not give any more information uh, on know. who those sources are, who gave him these that. flash drives, how he's so sure it's real, how he fact-checked it. He just says... They said they had her flash drive. I didn't ask too many questions about how they got it or where it came from. If somebody put my feet to the fire and said, life or death, is that book real? I have to say, I don't know, but it's real enough to me. Sometimes you just have to put it out there. Maybe it's not 100% of the book is true, but maybe 80% is. That is to get those people to come forward to either corroborate or deny the claims. And that helps me as an investigator to know the truth. He also says in the interview that he was asked to use the name Jamal T. Millwood. He states the T is for Tupac. Ultimately, he said it was kind of a battle. He slightly wanted to kind of use his name to get his name out there because he thought the book would blow up. But he was specifically asked by some unknown person that he never told us about to use the name Jamal T. Millwood. Ultimately, he states that the publishing of this book is almost like him being a whistleblower. Regardless of how netizens feel about the book, Kim Porter's family, friends, and ex-partner have all denied the book, stating it's all a cash grab. Amazon eventually pulls the book, stating, we were made aware of disputes regarding the title and have notified the publisher. This book is not currently for sale in our store. But now that the book has gone viral, regardless of validity, it has people intrigued by Kim Porter's relationship with Diddy. She is often said to be the one that was the closest to him, his best friend. Netizens are wondering, was her relationship with Diddy anything like what Cassie has experienced? And how did she pass away? Danielle walks into the Vibes studio. It's like a scene out of a movie. Staffers for this famous magazine are running around screaming at this point. I mean, all you need really are papers to go flying in the air like one of those Wall Street movie scenes, which sounds dramatic, but this whole thing is very dramatic. Back then, at these major publication houses, you would have to store all of your data on servers. These servers are not, there's no cloud. These servers are not little hard drives like they are today, USB, hee hee. They're massive. They're the sizes of nightstands, sometimes a dining table, and they're very heavy. Two of Vibe Studios servers had been stolen. Who the hell would want to steal the magazine servers? It's heavy, it's bulky, considering the level of security that they have in the middle of Manhattan, it's likely an inside job. I mean, it has to be. And the only person that they can all think of as they're sitting there figuring out what the hell to do is Sean Diddy Combs. What is Vibe Studio? It's a magazine. Now, Vibe had wanted Diddy on the cover of their end of the year magazine. Danielle was supposed to be the main person on the project. And the idea was this, the good, the bad, the puffy, because he was known as puffy back then. The idea was to hopefully somehow convince him to get into these angel wings for one photo. And then the other photo would have him looking slightly mischievous. It'd be a split cover. Possible cover line would be okay. bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? A play on the words because his company name is called Bad Boy Entertainment. They had already done the photo shoot a few months before the issue was supposed to run. And Diddy was not enthusiastic about the angel wings, but they somehow convinced him. It took a lot of energy, but he put them on and they took the photos and everything is going as planned. They didn't get the perfect mischievous shot, but th there's a good cover in there. But the reporter, Danielle, she gets a call from Diddy asking him to see the vibe covers before they hit the stands. And according to Danielle, the conversation goes something like this. Diddy asks to see the cover photos. Danielle responds, I'm sorry, but that's against our policy. We never show anyone our covers. You will be dead in the trunk of a car. Oh. Excuse me? Take it back. Danielle claims he starts laughing over the phone maniacally. Take what back? Fuck you. Take it back right now or I'm going to call my lawyer and you're going to go to jail. I know where you are right now. Damn. You're right on Lexington, aren't you? She wasn't think. in the office at the time. She was in the car. What? Like, she knows which street that she's driving on right now? Yes. How would he know where she is? 
Danielle hangs up. She's scared, but they don't make exceptions. They're not going to show him the covers. But when she turns around and goes back into her office, everybody's telling her Diddy's about to stop by. We just got called that Diddy's coming in and it's clear he wants to okay this cover before it goes to the press. Just a few years ago, he was found guilty of threatening a New York Post photographer with a gun. Apparently, the photographer came up to take a picture of Diddy in his company car. A confrontation took place. Diddy whipped out a gun and threatened the photographer. He was found guilty. So obviously, everybody at Vibe is freaking out. Now, thankfully, Vibe Studios had an external copy of the covers. But Danielle still has this reason to feel scared. The cover goes live, everything goes live as planned, but the servers were still stolen, nobody knows who. Danielle just has this weird feeling inside of her that Diddy is part of all of this. So he did a photo shoot for this magazine. He wants to see the photo shoot and they say, no, we cannot do that. And he blew up, that's it. Yes, there's another instance that we're gonna cover in the next episode where he was involved in a music video. He had this whole creative idea to be crucified in a music video. Last minute, he decides he doesn't want that part in the music video because he's like, maybe it's blasphemous. Yeah. The executives included it in, released the music video to the world, and Diddy beat an executive with a champagne bottle and was arrested. He has no control of his own emotions. Like he doesn't yeah. want to do it anymore. He crazy. just throw a tantrum. Yes. He will hurt you if you don't listen. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Beyond him threatening a photographer with a gun, Danielle has had a personal experience with Diddy involving him and his girlfriend, Kim Porter. According to Danielle, she had met with Kim Porter and two friends at this little restaurant in New York City. I mean, it doesn't appear that they were close, close friends per se, but they kind of run in the same circles. They're sitting there drinking their cocktails. They see Diddy walk in, which I'm sure everyone, even if they're not trying to be, they're all a little bit jealous of Kim Porter. She's dating Diddy, one of the most influential people in the industry, even at that point. So the four of the girls, they're sitting at the table. Diddy walks in. Diddy knows all four of them, but he doesn't even acknowledge Kim's friends. He just motions for Kim to pass her bag, allegedly, according to Danielle. He takes her bag, a little baguette purse, turns it upside down, emptying the whole purse. Things start clinking, clinking onto the table in the middle of this New York City restaurant. He's making a scene. He starts snatching up every single credit card that fell out while scathingly telling Kim, allegedly, you have no business being here. Here. You need to be at home with those kids. Get home as fast as you can. Danielle said Kim Porter just grabbed all her stuff and her friends see her just get shuffled into a car that's waiting outside for her. Which is ironic because eight years later in 2006, Diddy would be back on the cover of Vibe and he would tell Danielle, the same journalist, a woman deserves to be nurtured and taken care of. Kim taught me that. She taught me how to love. Have you ever seen Diddy's naked back? The feds probably have, but that's besides the point. His back has this giant tattoo that covers most of the surface area. It's a realistic image of a woman holding a child. So for those who are familiar, the woman is Azili Dentor from Haitian Voodoo. She embodies fierce maternal love and protection. She's known for feminine power. She's passionately protecting women, children, and marginalized communities. There's a saying that's often associated with her. It goes, if Azili loves you, Heaven help those who seek to hurt opposite. and destroy you. That nigga doing mm -hmm. juju, bro. She's a protector, but she's maternal in the sense. If you come for those who she's protecting, she will turn the world upside down. She will rip her opponents to shreds. It's said that in cases of domestic violence, she is called upon to, quote, destroy the offender. She's often associated with natural disasters and forces of nature. That's how powerful she's believed to be. It's a very interesting choice for a tattoo for Diddy. But many believe this is actually the start of his downfall. Some believe that him getting that tattoo was the downfall because she will seek vengeance. Mm -hmm. And she's seeing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's when did he get saying, that? Like, in like 2017, he revealed it to the world. Tattoo. It's unclear if he got it in 2017 though. Wow. Yes. And him and Cassie mm. broke up 2018. Yeah. Diddy first meets Kim Porter at Uptown Records, which was one of the most prominent record labels in the hip hop and R&B scene. It's not part of universal music, but back then, Uptown Records is the place to be and Diddy gets hired. He's working with the likes of Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, and honestly, from what I can tell by my little online research, it seems like everybody fucking hated Diddy at Uptown Records. Allegedly, the other executives would flick him off as he walked up. Hold on, my bad. Hey, if there's any mods on YouTube, hey, I think YouTube needs some moderation, but I don't know what the hell YouTube talking about. 
but I think YouTube needs some moderation. Any mods that's on YouTube. I think somebody named Good Eats is not eating good on YouTube chat. Hall at Uptown Records. Allegedly, the other executives would flick him off as he walked down the hallway to his desk and they would call him Satan behind his back. Wait, what was his role, his role there? He was an executive. Oh, okay. So, so he was he an artist then or? Okay, that's the thing that everybody gets confused with. Diddy was never an artist. Diddy was an executive. He started as an executive, started his own <laughs> record label, and he only released his debut album after Notorious B.I.G. passed away, was murdered, which we're going to cover in part three. He's actually a suit is what a lot of people called him. So he's an executive. So he's always been behind the scenes from the first day. Yeah. So them niggas didn't. So he starts as, as an executive, and everybody hates him. No. Well, there's some people that like no. him, like Kim Did Porter. He? Kim Porter worked as a receptionist at Uptown Records. I, I thought he was just like a musician, but I didn't know he was like already behind the scenes type shit. No, he he, he after after uh, Biggie died, that's when he became. You that's when he saying. released his album, but it's yeah, like release music. Yeah, but I didn't know he was like already behind the scene. I just thought he was even in some of Biggie Smalls uh, songs. Yeah. The, he was even in some of like his songs, like as far as like him just talking in it. I don't think he was like rapping that much, but he was like, you know what I'm saying? He would come in and that bitch drop something and then leave. Mm, okay. Records in New York City, where Diddy meets her for the first time and says it's love at first sight. Diddy remembers thinking, I wasn't trying to holler at her or anything, but I was admiring her. Her lips, her eyes, her mouth, her shape, her energy. I was just thinking, I wish I had a girl like that. She kind of made me feel nervous. You know, she wasn't like a New York girl. She was a bohemian mixed with Georgia peach hospitality. I got the idea that she liked doing stuff like walking barefoot in the grass. I didn't think that I could get her to like me. You know, she was smooth, you know, like ice. She's cool, collected. She R. thinks before she speaks. You meet a lot of young ladies and they just don't do that. Kim was never pressed. She was always in control. He would later say, she was my muse. You know how they say it in the movies? I mean, it's corny, but beautiful. She, she completes me. Which can be verified with some accounts from people at Uptown Records. They said, Puff is a super achiever. Kim is all about peace, love, and life. You know, Puff finds calm in her presence. Puff was in love with her from the first time he saw her. You could tell from the way that he looked at her. Which is unfortunate because Kim Porter is dating an artist signed with Uptown Records. I'll be sure. In fact, they have a child, a son together named Quincy. I mean, it took a few years of Diddy pursuing Kim Porter for them to finally give it a shot. And they said once they start dating, they're just inseparable. They said we went out together. We ate together. We played together. He would want me at the office. I would want him at my shoots because she's also a model. Our bond was so tight. Diddy said life is not good without Kim Porter around. So he was now, side note, while, of course, everybody accuses somewhere. Kim Porter at the time of being a gold digger. But everyone who knew her says, even if you ask about her favorite memories with Diddy, not a single one is materialistic. She says, I'm not impressed by things, not a bag or shoes or a car. I've got a lot of stuff, you know, impress me with your person. Show me that you can be a really good man. That's how you impress me. By the time they start dating, they've got this beautiful blended family. Kim Porter has Quincy from her previous relationship with Al B. Shore. Diddy has a one-year-old son, Justin Combs, that he had with his previous partner, Misa Hilton, who was also allegedly Kim's friend. And they actually become one of the most iconic celebrity couples during that time. According to one source, some tried calling them Black Barbie and Ken. They have their little fairy tale moment where Kim gets pregnant. She's about to give birth with Christian Combs, her second son, both of their second sons. And it's supposed to be this happily ever after. Until one day, allegedly, Kim is happily pregnant, happily in this beautiful relationship. She reads on the tabloids that the father of her child, the one that she's pregnant with, is dating Jennifer Lopez. Mm. J-Lo. What the? And she's what like, I didn't know that we we're broken up, basically, is what a lot of sources allege. That she didn't know until she read the tabloids. <laughs> According to an older Essence magazine publication, what? when Kim was pregnant with the couple's first child, Christian, did he, quote, stepped out on the relationship and in an astonishing display of celebrity infidelity, took up with Jennifer Lopez. Suddenly, there was Kim Porter's man, the father of her newborn son, parading his movie star girlfriend in front of the paparazzi's flashing cameras. To all the world, it looked like he was thinking, Man, Kim? I ain't gonna lie, yo, Diddy, that's some lame ass shit. And J Lo, man, 
That's some lame ass shit, man. Man, this nigga is in a relationship. You got a baby coming and you still, bro. That's lame as hell. That's all I'm saying. That's some bullshit. The paparazzi's <laughs> flashing cameras to all the world. It looked like he was thinking, Kim? What Kim? Damn, that's tough. Kim said the worst part of it all was that everyone, anytime she was around people, they would just keep asking her, Oh, Kim, are you all right? She said, quote, I just hated that. They were talking to me like I was just really crushed. I have kids. I'm a grown woman. According to some sources, Kim refused to acknowledge the fact that Diddy was dating J-Lo. She left. She broke up with him. She's no longer dating him, but she didn't confront him. She didn't. She never mentioned J-Lo. Mm. She just broke it off. And sources say that drove him absolutely batshit crazy. Mm. She didn't let it, let it show. Right? No. Her former attorney would later state, she knew he was sleeping with other women, but she was very jealous of J-Lo. How could you not be? But Kim was like a Disney princess, really, one of the most beautiful women I'd ever met. But the relationship wasn't real. That's what Kim and Diddy say. Yeah, that's what they both state after the fact. Kim says that relationship with Jennifer Lopez wasn't real. The world just saw the bright lights and camera, but I knew what was really going on. He was still in love with me. In a previous interview, Kim stated, he still called 50, 60 times a day. It was like my life was not my own. He's very, very intrusive. And they were public. They went to the 2000 Grammy Awards together where J-Lo wore that insane green Versace dress that everybody, ah, yes. The one that started a Google image search. Yes, okay. I don't even know the story behind that. Yeah, know. apparently this is something people are looking too. up that photo that Google created the image search tab oh, wow. because of that photo. <gasps> Yeah, they were an iconic couple. Shit. So from the outside, they seem like they're both in love. But again, according to Kim and Diddy, they were not. Diddy corroborates all of this by stating the whole time he was with J-Lo, he could not stop thinking about Kim Porter. And he also kind of blames the cheating on Kim by stating, you know, I, I'm used to applause when I walk into the room. And Kim was just too cool. I would tell her, I guess I'll just go be with someone who will take care of me the way I want to be taken care of, who will be a little more aggressive. That did not do the trick. And quote, what? Kim wasn't really conforming to how I wanted her to conform. So dating J-Lo was his statement to Kim. He later states, Jennifer was my perfect match in terms of energy. I thought I'll test the waters and hopefully Kim will see I'm serious and come running after me. Except she didn't. According to Diddy, all he could think about during this entire time was Kim. He said, with Jennifer, I was attracted to someone who had the same energy as me, but that isn't necessarily the best. Because I'm so aggressive, the best energy for me is someone who slows me down, makes me feel like I can breathe. It's hard for me to breathe, but when I'm around Kim, I feel like I can do that. Apparently, the Grammys event, where I was telling you that J-Lo wore that insane Versace dress, mm -hmm. okay. Kim was watching the Grammys with her friend and she casually just said, I guarantee Diddy will call me before the credits roll. Sure enough, he calls her at the Grammys that he's with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Bro, that is... And I'm sure, but this is probably the worst 14 hours of Jennifer Lopez's life when she gets arrested with Diddy in connection to a shooting. As they're dating, both of them get arrested in New York City for a shooting that happens at a club. Diddy had been at this club with J-Lo, Shine, which is like a musical artist that he had just signed, I believe, and his bodyguard, Anthony Wolf Jones. The four of them are at a club when an argument breaks out and somehow that escalates to shots being fired. Ultimately, three people get shot. There are witnesses from the club that are certain that they saw Diddy holding a gun in his hand. Diddy's protege, Shine, was also holding a gun. And according to a witness, that's what the witness remembers, but they fell to the ground because they had been shot in the shoulder. Another bystander, she had nothing to do with the initial fight. She doesn't even know these people. Her name is Natanya Rubin. She was shot in the face by Diddy, she claims. It said that in the ER, before she passed out, she said, I was shot by Puffy. <clears throat> Thankfully, she survived. And Wait, her who got in fight with who? There was just like a bar brawl. It was like a fight and they just started shooting. Diddy got into an argument with like bar goers? I believe his musical protege and some people got into slight arguments oh. and then all these guns got whipped out in Manhattan and shots were fired. Thankfully, Natanya survived and her story has been consistent for the past 20 something years. She's always said, I watched him. I watched Puffy. I saw him with my own eyes shoot and it went through my nose. Like the bullet oh. went to her nose. That's what is she doing right now? Not well. She's doing interviews because now in 2024, people finally believe her.
What? Now, Shine, the 18-year-old musician, gets arrested at the club. Diddy and J-Lo had already left by the time that cops come. They ran straight to the car. Side note, some allege that Diddy zipped out of there, leaving his girlfriend behind. But either way, they both end up in the car being chased by NYPD. I think they run like 11 traffic lights before they're finally pulled over. And inside the car, some sources allege inside J-Lo's purse was the gun because Diddy would make her... Anyway, long story short, there's a lot of allegations that Diddy was the shooter. They all get arrested. J-Lo's charges are dropped. Now it's just Diddy, his bodyguard, and his musical protege, Shine. Now, Diddy is represented by a famous attorney, Johnny L. Cochran Jr. This guy's resume is absolutely oh, man, unhinged. His attorney has since passed, but he used to rep O.J. Simpson, yeah, Michael Jackson Simpson. against the child molestation accusations. He rep Tupac, and now he's repping Diddy. In this trial, not this one in 2024, but the one in the shooting. Mm. Now, their defense was stating that, yes, he was there. Yes, he pulled out the gun. Yes, he fired the gun. Okay, but he shot it to the ceiling as a warning sound for everyone to get down, get quiet, calm down. Every shot after that, that actually injured people. (laughs) That's got to be shine. That's got to be 18 year old musical artist right there. Of course, and the only reason that they're all saying all these witness testimonies are coming out saying that it was Diddy is because Diddy's the one with the money. So they're going to file civil lawsuits because they want the money. Ultimately, Diddy gets acquitted. So does the bodyguard. But Shine gets 10 years in prison for assault, gun possession, and reckless endangerment. Somebody has to be held responsible and it can't be Diddy. Which, side Mm. note, he was always pictured walking around in silk suits during his trial. Other times he'd be wearing... I ain't gonna lie, that nigga kind of look like Kaius and that right here. Bro, I'm telling hey, y'all, bro. Hey, hey nah, I've said that right, several times, bro. Look like a little nigga, bit. put a dread on that nigga. He look like <laughs> Kaius. I'm telling you. Walking around in silk suits during his trial. Other times he'd be wearing clothes from his own clothing line, Sean John. There would be people outside the courthouse with signs that read, hip-hop needs you, keep puffy here. After the verdict is read, Diddy would tell the reporters, I give all my glory to God. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to walk out of here. I want to thank my mother for being by my side every day. And a lot of people have stated, that sounds like a like an award speech. Mm. <laughs> all the people, all my fans, my staff, all the people in New York, everybody that prayed for me all over the world, thank you. I just feel so grateful today. I feel blessed. Shine would eventually be deported back to Belize in 2009. He would say in a podcast, Diddy's lawyers were here to secure a not guilty verdict by any means. He is a $100 million corporation, and they looked at me like I was the enemy. That's wow. crazy. After the shooting, Diddy and JLo stay together a bit longer, but it's really only a matter of time. It's alleged by insiders that once Diddy left JLo in the club like that after the shooting, she was over him. She was like, I am so done. But while they're dating, another incident takes place in 2000. There's this massive wedding in Italy for L.A. Reid, the former CEO of Epic Records. Now, given L.A. Reid's status in the industry, everybody's going to be there, including Shakir Stewart. He's a music executive. Most notably, he worked at Def Jam Records. He's actually a very big player in the world. He was responsible for signing artists like Beyonce, Ciara, and Rick Ross. He's at this wedding in Italy, and if his mother's allegations are correct, he may have potentially been dating Kim Porter. Since Diddy is in a very public relationship with J-Lo, why wouldn't Kim Porter move on too? I mean, it's said that Diddy, who is also a guest at the wedding, finds Shakir's hotel room, bursts in through the door. Finds whose? Shakir Stewart's hotel room, Kim's alleged boyfriend at the time. Uh And in a fit of rage that Kim Porter had moved on, you know, just like he allegedly had with J-Lo, he grabs a chair and slams it over Shakir Stewart's head. Shakir's mom said about the whole incident, Diddy left him, bleeding on the hotel floor in Italy. He had to have stitches, and then Diddy threatened him. I'm going to kill you. That's when I said, you need to get out of this business. This man is crazy. Diddy has always denied that this has ever happened, but a few people that have attended the wedding corroborated the story to Rolling Stone. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, says, Kim couldn't have nobody. Kim couldn't have nobody. Diddy, Puff, could do whatever he wanted to do. Brother Love could be whoever he wanted to be. If Kim ever tried to get with somebody, Puff would interfere with them or her for trying to be with them. He wouldn't let that happen unless he was bringing them into the picture. Kim couldn't go nowhere. Kim couldn't be in a relationship. She couldn't be at the clubs. If he called Kim's house, she had to be there. 
again, these are just allegations, but another allegation is that he had Kim Porter's whole house bugged and wired, and that's how he knew that she was seeing Shakir Stewart, and he would hire PIs to follow her around. But again, the whole thing is just beyond bizarre and infuriating because he can do whatever he wants, treat Kim allegedly like shit, but nothing happens to him. Now, side note, I don't know, again, if this is true. This is just another allegation. But one insider states that Kim had told her about how they broke up and, quote, did he put her up in this apartment building on the Upper West Side? It was an old building, and she said her apartment was infested with rats. She said she came home one day, tried to put on her boots, and there was rat feces on them. And she was just like, I got to get out of this place. Which a former attorney for Kim backs it up by stating he didn't want to pay her rent, get a nice apartment for her, nothing. So truly, he just treats her like shit every time they break up is the allegation. Mm-hmm. And probably while they're dating, who knows? Now, the anonymous source continues in the allegations. I mean, I remember just her being the sweetest, kind, warm, and caring person. Diddy was a controlling narcissist, and I could see why he would be attracted to someone like him. Three. What's she on got? Oh, money. Over the summer, a family friend's daughter who had just graduated high school was talking about this personal finance class that she had taken. Instantly, my jaw was dropped because I was pleasant. Man. Uh, shout out Acorn, man. If y'all want to invest, go invest. Let me skip this. How many y'all invest, chat? <laughs> I got Do I got any investors in here? Download the Acorn app. Closures at acorns.com slash rotten. That's in 2000 at L.A. Reed's wedding in Italy. The summer of 2001, something else will allegedly take place, but we, the public, won't know about it until this year. Then 25-year-old Talia Graves says that she was panicked. She woke up, found herself tied up. Who's Talia Gray? She's just a woman who woke up tied up on a couch in Diddy's studio. Um, wow. And all she remembers is she had just met with Diddy and one of Diddy's bodyguards, Joe Sherman. And the only reason she was even meeting with them is because she that was dating one scary. of Diddy's employees, <laughs> an executive at Bad Boy Entertainment. Diddy called her specifically to come and talk to him about scary. her it's boyfriend's performance issues. She thought it was weird, I'm sure, but maybe he's trying to sit her down and be like, are you distracting your boyfriend from work? Why is he so distracted? She just wants to help her boyfriend. So she goes to meet with Diddy. They urge her to drink a glass of wine. She drinks it and that's it. She knocks out and now she's waking up and her arms are tied behind her back, allegedly, according to the lawsuit. Now, Diddy and Joe Sherman, the bodyguard, this is what she says. Her lawsuit alleges that they essay her from that point forward. She states that she was crying for help the whole time and nobody came. According to the devastatingly explicit lawsuit, quote, plaintiff, so plaintiff is going to be Talia and Mr. Combs is Diddy, so I'm just going to replace it to make it easier. Talia screamed out in pain, but Diddy continued to violently anally rape her. He physically overpowered her, smashing her head down on the pool table. During the brutal attack, Talia vomited into her mouth and on the table. At one point, she involuntarily defecated. Diddy was undeterred. He wiped himself off and applied more lubricant and without any acknowledgement of Talia's distress, proceeded to essay her. The lawsuit states she experienced intense pain and burning sensations before losing consciousness again. The next thing she knew, she woke up on the couch to, allegedly, Joe Sherman slapping her across the face, forcing his private parts into her mouth. She states her face and wrists were bruised. She was in severe pain and distress. And when he was done, she quickly grabbed her clothes in fear that Diddy would come back and just ran out of there. She was terrified at the time to report Diddy because it's Diddy, but also she claimed she was in a very nasty custody battle over her child, and she was scared that this would make her lose her chances. She told her boyfriend, the executive, but allegedly he tells her not to do anything because you're going to ruin my career. So for the next few decades, she states that she bore the consequences, having panic attacks, self-exit thoughts, depression, and she thought she was moving on until November of 2023. She learns for the first time that over 20 years ago, what happened to her had been filmed. And that video of her being essayed was being shown to multiple men at Bad Boy Entertainment and was used to publicly degrade and humiliate her. It's, it felt like all this trauma that they allegedly inflicted on her was solely for Diddy to allegedly feel like he humiliated his own executive, like some sort of power move. Like, see what I can do to your girlfriend? How did she find out about that part? A, the lawsuit claims her ex-boyfriend told her. 
just like mentioned it in passing, I guess. The other executives at Bad Boy had seen it, and they all basically allegedly slut-shamed Talia, the victim, and told the alleged boyfriend of hers to break up with her because of the video, because she was a victim. Well, but this doesn't video... come out until 2024. The alleged essay takes place in 2001. And now, in 2003, where we are in the story, Kim Porter and Diddy officially get back together. Two years after Talia's You'll assault, to they get back together. What? Alleged assault, legally speaking. They're seen at a lot of high-profile events together. They're spotted strolling on the beach together. I mean, it seems like this time around, Diddy is trying really hard. They're constantly seen spending quality time attending these high-profile music yeah, awards. Man, nigga, that same year, though, another incident occurs that we won't know about until this year. Cipriani's is one of the more famous restaurants in New York City, and Crystal McKinney, a model signed with IMG Models, is invited there to meet with this huge fashion designer, Sean Diddy Combs, of the Sean John clothing line. He had just launched his Sean John clothing line, and they're doing like $450 million in retail sales. What? Yeah. This is going to be the know. next huge step in Crystal's career. There's no connection like Diddy in the industry. She had to fly all the way from Miami to New York City, but that's fine. But there's more rules. The designer for Sean John tells her that she needs to go to the hair salon, make sure to touch up her roots so that she remains fully platinum blonde. She needs to get her extensions and the clothing to meet Diddy in must be a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon beige v-neck shirt, a fur lined handbag and jewel encrusted jeans. It felt a little specific in particular, but it's fine. She shows up to Cipriani's. She's seated directly across from Diddy and almost instantly he's hitting on her. Quote, coming on in a sexually suggestive manner. He keeps telling her that she's beautiful. Her eyes are gorgeous. You're going to make it one day as a model. You're going to be big one day, especially because I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you the connections. And he's just nonstop whispering these things to her, refilling her wine glass nonstop. He gives her his number and tells her, Call me later tonight. That night, he instructs her to meet him at his New York City studio, at which point there's a bunch of people drinking there, just smoking a joint, drinking. She smokes weed, so Crystal accepted, but that was not weed. Supposedly, she believes it's weed laced with a narcotic and some maybe some other intoxicating substances because one hit, that's it. She's like, that is crazy because she's a weed smoker, so this is not... Mm -hmm. This is not weed. Mm -hmm. One hit and she's feeling not well. And he tells her, you're being way too uptight. Keep drinking, keep drinking. She said she feels like she's floating in the air. Eventually, she's unable to control her body. She tries to go to use the restroom, but allegedly Diddy follows her in and essays her. He forces her head down and commands her to, quote, suck it. She refused, but he allegedly forced her anyway. And she states that he just left once he was done getting what he wanted. She gets up, ends up losing consciousness. The next thing she remembers is just in a cab, heading out of the studio. Years later, Crystal would end up hospitalized after a self-exit attempt. And it's hard, she states, in the lawsuit, because everywhere she would go, she would be reminded of her alleged essayer. He's everywhere, on TV, music, film, everywhere, being celebrated, everywhere, and she can't escape. She said, I had my whole future mapped out that was stolen from me. Being essayed and having no recourse is so painful. I felt like I was dying every day. You know, I, I did not have the strength to come forward yet. I hope that by speaking out, I can help other victims come forward and seek justice. The public would find out about Crystal's allegations decades later but she's not the only one suffering. The same year in 2003, while Diddy is flaunting Kim Porter on his arm, getting praised for raising $2 million for the New York City education system, winning BET awards, MTV awards, getting nominated for Grammys, Jane Doe is 17 years old in 2003. That means she's in the 11th grade. And she was, according to the allegations brought forth in her lawsuit, just offered a ride on a private jet. Like, I don't know many people that would turn that down, especially when the private jet is being chartered by P. Diddy. In the lawsuit, Jane Doe alleges that she met with Harvey Pierre. This is the eventual president of Diddy's company, Bad Boy Entertainment. He was one of the top executives from the get-go. Jane Doe meets with Harvey in this lounge in Detroit, and she doesn't know who he is, but he keeps telling her, do you know my best friend is Diddy? So... This guy, the president, right? 
he works for Diddy. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. So Diddy is more in charge than the president. Oh yes, yes. Okay. So to the point where he calls Diddy and is like, "Hey, this girl at the bar doesn't really like believe me. I guess." So here you go. She she hears Diddy on the phone, and over the phone, Diddy allegedly convinces her to get on a private jet to come see him in New York. He convinces her, and I'm I'm sure she's excited. And as they're heading, getting ready to leave, she alleges Harvey Pierre asked her to come into the bathroom with him, where she alleges that he was smoking crack cocaine from a Pepsi can. And once he was done, he took off his pants and ordered her to quote suck it and forcibly shoved her head down. Side note: the law firm representing her is the same law firm that represented Cassie Ventura. Oh. So I'm just saying. It is up to a lot of law firms to do their due diligence to make sure that the clients have strong cases. Mm -hmm. So do that with what you will, right? Now, following that, she alleges in the lawsuit that they drove to the airport, boards this private jet, flies into New York City where there's two black SUVs waiting for them. They go to Daddy's House Recording Studio, which is owned by Bad Boy, Daddy's House, where she alleges that he was pushing her to drink and smoke. So it's four of them in there. Did he? Mr. Pierre, Harvey Pierre, and a third unknown person. She doesn't even know the name of this person. And they keep telling her how hot and sexy she is. Eventually, Diddy leads her, allegedly, into the bathroom in the studio and allegedly assaults her over the sink. She states she did not consent, and according to the lawsuit, he told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to get him off. Yeah. Squeeze By this what? point, she says him off. He told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to get him off. Squeeze his, his nipples. nipples. Yeah. By this point, Got she it. says she's coming in and out of consciousness and her next memory was waking up to see the third assailant starting to essay her in the restroom. She kept telling him to stop, but he did not. Once he left, Harvey Pierre allegedly came in to essay her. And she recalls having a hard time breathing because of how he was forcing himself onto her. Same, she was man. in pain. It wasn't until they were, quote, broke you know, more or less done with her, she fell to the bathroom floor and crawled into a fetal position. She doesn't even remember anything else, but vaguely, she's just on a plane back to Michigan. When this lawsuit was filed in the end of 2023, Harvey Pierre has denied the accusations against him, stating, this is a tale of fiction. I've never participated in or witnessed nor heard of anything like this ever. These disgusting allegations are false and a desperate attempt for financial gain. I will vigorously protect my reputation and defend my name. Those who know me recognize these claims are not true. Good Diddy's night, attorneys filed a motion to dismiss, calling it, quote, a decades old tale, a baseless claim in an effort to extract an undeserved financial recovery. Fiction, a desperate attempt. But this is what Jane Doe alleges happened in 2003, the same year Diddy is back together with Kim Porter. And it's very likely that Kim Porter did not know about these incidents because Jean, the former bodyguard, states Kim would have incidents with Diddy where he would allegedly convinced him to partake in group activities and do things that she did not want to do, have intimate relations with men that she did not want to. It's so the way that he describes it and alleges Cassie. is similar to Cassie's freak offs. Yeah, same I don't true. know. And it appears that Diddy had a high level of control over Kim's life and what she was privy to. So likely she didn't know any of this. One supposed industry professional alleges that they saw Kim and Diddy at the 2003 MTV Awards red carpet. And she claims, and again, this is just an allegation, but I remember specifically how controlling he was over her. He was literally just sitting there staring at her hair. He wasn't happy with it. The way that the curl went one direction, he was like, I don't care if I miss the whole show, we're not leaving until we get this curl right about her hair. She claims on the inside, she just thought, wow, this guy's so controlling. The same insider shares a story that allegedly takes place in New York City. Again, just an allegation, but one time I went to their Park Avenue apartment to work. Kim Porter had this jewelry person arrive and she picked out jewels for the evening to wear. They were going to an event and it took hours to get her ready. And then she kept waiting for Diddy to come home so that they could go to the event together. We were sitting there for hours, but he never came. So she never went out to the event. She just went to sleep instead. Mike Curry, a former artist signed with Bad Boy said, their relationship was a lot. I remember Kim used to go through a lot of stuff. If you live around them, you get to see the toxic relationship. I think every relationship he had that I experienced around him was like that. Jean Deal, again, the former bodyguard, states that throughout the years, Kim always had suspicious injuries, broken noses, bruises, ankle injuries. Interestingly enough, Jean Deal also alleges that Diddy was never aggressive with Jennifer Lopez. He states that J-Lo's mom already hated Diddy, 
and it said that he wasn't willing to handle the backlash if he were to put his hands on her. Gene insinuates that he likely knew if she told anyone, it would be over for him. So the way that Gene describes it is, it seems like he is very fond of Kim Porter. And I think he means this with as much enlightening, insightful information as he can allegedly give. But he's stating that Diddy knows who to mess with. J-Lo was not dependent on him. She was already a star by this point. Mm. Whereas the women that he does physically yeah. go after, allegedly, are women that are dependent on him. Yeah, I mean, that's typical behavior for someone like, yeah. you know, just all about the power. He would even say in an interview that Kim was in with him while they're dating. He says, do you really think God meant for a man to just have one wife? Or a woman to just have one husband? Do you really think God meant it that way? Kim snaps back. Do you really want me having sex with another man? You want that to happen? No, but God made us different. She explains, that is such a cop-out. I could just be like you, but I just choose not to be. Well, sometimes things happen. And this is the most monogamous I've ever been in my life. That's all I'm trying to say. Kim would later tell the reporter, he's giving, gentle, and sensitive, especially with me. He's really a good guy with a big heart. I get to see that, and I'm really thankful I get to see that. Until one day, Diddy comes home, and Kim Porter is gone. So they get back together in 2003. Around the end of 2007, she leaves. Unbeknownst to Diddy, while he's out of town at the BET Awards show, Kim calls her closest girlfriends over. They pop open a bottle of wine. Cheers, clink, it's time to pack. Kitchen table, nursery furniture, the cars, everything is leaving with Kim. I hope that he came home to an empty home, but I, I, I'm not sure how much she took. After 12 years, Kim Porter finally walks out on Diddy, 12 years on and off. She's done being his romantic partner. I mean, she will always be the mother to his children. They will co-parent, but she is so done. A little over 10 months prior to her moving out, Kim Porter was pregnant with Diddy's twins. They had rekindled their on and off relationship again, like I said, and they had done all these interviews. They were in a very public relationship and she had done recent interviews after getting pregnant about, you know, I know Diddy like I know my kids. And just talking about how what they had was different. And then one day Kim's friend calls her and she sounds uncomfortable, I'm sure. And she tells her, basically, Diddy had cheated on her with another woman. And that woman had recently just gave birth to Diddy's child. Do we know who? Sarah Chapman. And she gave birth to Chance Combs. She was born just like five, six months before the twins were born. Hmm. To which Kim had enough. She never confronted him while she was pregnant. She just said, it's not an original script. He's not the first man who has cheated. He's not the first man who's had a baby outside of the relationship. He's not the originator of this. But at this point in my life, I have girls now. It's a different program. The worst part is he didn't tell her until after she gave birth. So she's giving him the time to fess up, own up, because he has a literal newborn baby. So just tell her. Sarah gives birth to Chance Combs July of 2006. The twins are born December of 2006. She says, he told me he may have gotten himself in a situation and he may have fathered another child outside the relationship. Kim said she already knew and responded, really? Well, I already knew and I'm glad you decided to be a man. I was like, dude, this is so whack. I can't even respect you right now. And for me, once the respect is gone, I'm not even listening to you anymore. Later, the same magazine, Essence, will ask her, you left in quite a dramatic way, you know? taking the furniture, the cars, leaving. They ask, why did it go down like that? Because there was no other way. You think he would have let me walk out the door? He wouldn't have wanted me to go. Were you scared? No, not at all. But I wanted to be dramatic. I wanted him to know I wasn't breaking up with him for two weeks or maybe leaving for two days. If I pack up everything, twins and all, it means I'm out. Puffy's an action person, not a talk person. So I had to have an action. Telling him, babe, I'm leaving, just wasn't going to do it. In another interview, she states, mainly I'm a mom first, so that is the most important to me. So everything else kind of comes after that. And it seems like that's exactly what she planned on doing. Focus on her career, her children, after the breakup. In an interview with Essence, Kim was asked, if Diddy called you today and said, I want to get married right now, would you? She says, I would say no. And not because I don't want to get married, but because he's not ready for marriage. When I get married, I want to stay married. I want both parties to be on the same page at the same time and to leave a certain type of behavior behind. Hello. That's a commitment I don't think he's ready for. Oh, yeah. Diddy would also state around this time. 
Kim is an incredible mother to our children. We've been part of each other's lives for many years, and I've always admired her courage and strength. We're the best of friends. You know, I got three girls, three boys, and they're really kind, great people. They got a lot of love in their hearts. I'm the luckiest man in the world. So she walked out just one day after finding out that Diddy was cheating. Yes. But Diddy never went after her. Like, you know how, you know, he's very controlling. Uh, yes. He's very, man- yeah. It seems like he did. He did. But she's oh. like, no, I'm done. Don't come for me. And okay. That's the allegation. It seems like he did. Mm. Yeah. Now, Kim also lets it be known that they were on amicable terms. She said that they're still friends. He calls every single day. She told a reporter, you know, we're committed to our children, even if we couldn't commit to each other. I mean, it's clear none of them want to say too much publicly about what happened. And like Kim said, she's going to focus on her career. And perhaps one of that is acting. She was in a pilot episode for a show called Single Ladies, where her character is a snarky former, quote, video vixen. Video what? Video vixen, I guess, is talent that's hired for music videos, typically. Side note, a few netizens have been reposting. I'm not going to lie, bro. Our husband is just like me. I'm like, video vixen. I'm like, okay, what? <laughs> what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> the I guess is talent that's hired for music videos, typically. Side note, a few netizens have been reposting this scene as they think it's just an eerie coincidence. Kim's character on the show says, and again, this is a fictional show. I found God and he told me to make a change. So I'm a writer now. I'm writing a tell-all book about my years of being a video vixen. I got lots of stories about lots of rappers and I'm about to get paid. I am in no way of insinuating that taken down book is true or not. So far, there isn't strong evidence of how the author received the hard drives. So I do question its validity. But if the lawsuits filed against Diddy are proven to be true, it does seem that Kim Porter would have a lot to say. Mm. Gene, the former bodyguard, would even say the violence towards women was a consistent pattern in his belief and opinion. He alleges that he heard that Diddy had beat Nisa Hilton, the first mother of his child, Justin's mother, so hard that she allegedly once was so scared she crawled under a car to get away from him. Mm. According to Gene's allegations, he just does not understand how someone beats someone to that point that they desperately crawl under a car. That level of violence is a lot, which again, doesn't mean that Kim wrote a tell-all Speaking of Misa Hilton, Justin's mother, April Lampros is another victim who has since filed a lawsuit against Diddy. She had received an invite in the mail, a Father's Day celebration for Diddy after the birth of his first biological child, Justin Combs, that he shares with Misa Hilton. So this is before he's dating Kim Porter. So this is the 90s? Yes. Okay. Dear friends, join us in celebrating the original Bad Boys first Father's Day celebration. For this occasion, there is a dress code. No jeans or sneakers will be permitted. It's a Father's Day party. April is a student from FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology. And this is all awkward because she is allegedly seeing Diddy romantically and Diddy just had a child with Misa Hilton. And it, the whole thing is weird. Okay. April Lampro states in her lawsuit that he was just love bombing her constantly, bringing her gifts, bringing her to the studio to impress her. Even a month after the Father's Day event, she was invited to see performances by Usher and Notorious B.I.G. thanks to Diddy. And at first it all seems sweet. He just seems like he always wants to be around, flying her from New York to Atlanta to Miami, just wherever he was, he wanted her be, her to be around. But then he told her that they have to keep their relationship a secret because she alleges, quote, he did not want anyone to know that he was seeing her because she's a white woman. Mm -hmm. The lawsuit goes into detail about four alleged essay incidents. The first, April alleges she went to meet with Diddy at a bar in Soho. He introduces her to a female friend of his. She remembers having a few sips of her drinks and they all left for a hotel nearby and she just had this feeling of uneasiness in the hotel room. She remembers laying in bed when Diddy forced himself on top of her. She leaves and she told herself she would never talk to Diddy again, but he continues love bombing her and telling her how advantageous her life will be. Her career will take off as long as Diddy is on her side. So, I mean, she's studying to get into the fashion world, which he is a big prominent figure of at that time. She thought that perhaps the first incident was maybe she misremembered. Then it happened again, the second incident. She alleges that this happened in a parking garage near his apartment in the city. They were going to dinner. Diddy's a little drunk. And as they're headed towards his car, he just grabs her out of nowhere, forces her to kneel on the concrete in the parking lot, unzips his pants, and forces her to perform orally. She said that she could see the parking attendant witness this horrific assault, but Diddy allegedly did not care. And once he's done, she's crying and he just tells her, get up. 
She states once again she tried to distance herself and then it didn't work. Then the third time, she alleges at this point, Diddy and Kim Porter had started dating. She alleges in the lawsuit, again, this is an allegation, that she was called to his apartment where Kim Porter and two other people were there. They all go to the club that night, and when they get back, they continue drinking. He insists that Kim Porter and April take ecstasy, is what the lawsuit alleges. She said he essentially forced her to take the pill. He was forcing his hand so far into her throat, she almost gagged. And even afterwards, he's checking under their tongues like a psych ward nurse. She alleges in the lawsuit that Diddy forced the two of them, April and Kim, to engage in intimate acts while he sat watching and self-pleasuring. My goodness, bro. Towards the end, he, quote, sat close by master for some time before pushing Kim Porter off Miss Lampros, April, and forcing himself inside and essaying April. April said that she just went completely numb and emotionally checked out. And it wasn't until Diddy kicked her out a few hours later that she felt all this disgust and shame. And she alleges the crazy thing is, even after all of this, he had the audacity to invite April to Kim Porter's birthday party. The fourth time, she alleges, was after he broke up with Kim Porter to date J-Lo. And while he's actively in a public relationship with J-Lo, he forces her to his apartment and tries to essay her once more. She manages to leave. And she thought that was it. But just like Talia, she said in 2023, April's boyfriend states that he was just approached by this random redacted man. So they redacted the name, but it's clear that they know who, who told him along the lines of, you really should reconsider dating that girl because I personally saw videos of her having intimate relations with Diddy. April alleges that's how she discovered he had filmed some of the encounters. She didn't know that he had filmed it and she didn't know that he had shown it to people. Other key allegations in her lawsuit are, Mr. Combs does not like the word no. Now, one significant detail, or I guess insignificant detail, would be a better description. In the lawsuit, April alleges, quote, Miss Lampros recalls Mr. Combs' penis being adolescently in both length and width. Eventually, after Kim Porter, Diddy goes on to have a very public relationship with Cassie Ventura. Jean Deal, the former bodyguard, says, I didn't know Cassie, but I knew someone like Cassie. I knew Kim Porter. Which obviously, there's a lot of discourse here about him having three mothers to his children. Diddy does argue, interestingly, on the Wendy Williams show. Keep this in mind because Wendy Williams comes back again in episode four of this Diddy series. He argues that he met the mother of his children, all three of them, Kim Porter, Misa Hilton, and Sarah Chapman in the same year. He says, I met all of them in the same year, so I've known them in the same amount of time. We were all friends. I wasn't running around through my career and every couple of years just being like a new with a new person. These are people that have been my friends. Then I would get my heart broken and then my friend would be there and I would fall in love with my friend and then I would get my heart broken, which is a crazy Victim. statement. Yeah, how is that better? Victim. You know? I, I met all of them in the same year, so I've known huh? all of them the same amount of time. We, we were friends. I, no, 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 no. He also said specifically about having daughters. He has three sons and now four daughters. The youngest being Love Combs was born in 2022. This next statement is crazy. It took me to have daughters to really know how to treat a woman. And I'm still learning. But I guess they didn't teach him that much because in another appearance on The Breakfast Club, he's there sitting next to his son, Christian Combs, who is the one being sued by the yacht stewardess, Grace. This is what he says about dating. And by the way, Christian is like a teenager at this point. So he's like consciously aware. And he looks up to his dad. He's his role model. He says, if I'm in a relationship with you, 25% of your time, you're just going to be like, oh man, I hate being here. This guy cheated on me. He lied on me. But then there's 75% of the time, I'm going to make you the happiest woman in the whole wide world. I'm going to be there to support your dreams. I'm going to be there to hold you, listen to you. I'm going to be there to be your best friend. And I promise you'll smile the most. You know who I am. This is what it is. Which deal do you choose? Which is just the craziest thing ever. But Diddy claims he really loves his children. So for his children, he has started a new company called Combs Cartel, which is very questionable. Fuck. It's an umbrella company for the joint ventures of his children. Hello. His first son, Quincy, who he adopted, that he has with Kim Porter. He is acting. He recently starred in the Netflix special Holiday Calendar. Justin is Diddy's first biological child with Misa Hilton. He used to run a segment on Revolt TV, which is a media company that used to be owned by Diddy, called Respectfully Justin where he interviews celebrities. But like he does, you know what? I'm not gonna go there. 
he doesn't really interview the celebrities. He has a co-host that does all the talking. He just kind of is there. Mm. And so people have called him out for being a Nepo baby because you're not really doing anything on the show. You just got a show because your dad owns the network. Mm. Right. I digress. Then there's uh. Christian Combs, the first child with Kim Porter. Christian is taking more after his dad, trying to get into music. Musically, he goes by the name King Combs. He has a song called Can't Stop, Won't Stop featuring Kodak Black. I think that was his biggest song. But I think the most talked about song is a song he recently released five months ago. It's called Pick a Side. Pick a Side. This was released after the feds it. raided Diddy's homes, but before he's arrested. Mm. The more relevant lyrics go like this. I dare one of you N-words scream out, no Diddy. Might see me with some pretty hoes with me, but ain't no ho in me. Police raid the crib like we selling crack. We ain't doing that, but we out here selling tracks, multi-million dollar plaques. All that woofing on the net, internet, I guess. Well, now it's time to show N, steady talking to the fam, and we don't even know. But go ahead, play one call away. We ain't sparing no Knock them walls down like when them Fetty boys ran in both of our cribs. Too bad they ain't know we bought the one next door because that's the one they missed. Wait, wait, what did he just say about next door? She's saying, first of all, all of you guys are yapping. At <laughs> that's how every white nigga look at every black rapper, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every white nigga, huh? No, what <laughs> you just said, buddy? That's how every next white door? nigga look at every black rapper, bro. Nah, that, that was niggas funny. Don't be understanding she but shit. damn, bro, nigga. See, this is how niggas be. I mean, it's a good thing he did it. Niggas be snitching all them damn stuff. Like, niggas is dumb, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Some niggas yeah, is snitch. Stupid. Snitch on yourself so we but can lock case, your bitch ass up. It's a good thing. Niggas snitch so they can pack your ass the fuck up, man. Niggas don't be. This is funny, that shit, bro. Bit, bro. I want to rap in front of, like, uh, a Caucasian, bro. Just say shit like this. Like, just use a bunch of black slang. Just see his face. Um, what? He's gonna be... <laughs> what is... What is... What is Glock? Nah, what? Niggas know what Glock is. What is Mo? <laughs> what, is, what does it mean when you say I'm hip? <laughs> Too bad they ain't know we bought the one next door because that's the one they missed. Wait, wait, what did he just say about next door? <laughs> He's saying, first of all, all of you guys yapping on the internet, we're not uh -huh. sparing anyone. This is like a freaking I, war. I need then he goes on to state, like the feds raided our crib acting like we're selling crack, but we're not. We're selling tracks, but also jokes on them because they hit. missed one because we, they had purchased two homes in Miami, it seems, uh -huh. on Star oh, Island. Yeah. And I guess yeah, he's yeah. insinuating yeah, he's, that the feds didn't check the new home or something that they bought next door. Really? He's flexing about that. Oh, just you wait till the comments. Now, there seems to be references to 50 Cent and Eminem. We will get to that in part four, where we go through all of Diddy's friends and then everyone who has hated him since day one. Because there's a lot of celebrities who have been beefing with him since day oh, yeah, one. Now, the main comments on this diss track read, this shit is whack. Is Others point like out that he's grown up in such a privileged man, household, he can't even make Eminem a good diss track. They comment, wow, we're really... I saw that song with Eminem where he kind of like exposed Diddy, and it was like it was like the the he oh, said he didn't just take P out of he said he didn't say P out of you know uh the the R A P some was some some like you know oh, I think I know I think I know yeah yeah that was now a you new song to wasn't it? But yeah. He, he Eminem exposed Diddy multiple times though. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, but a lot of people have been talking about Diddy. It's just nobody take him seriously because. It's P. Diddy, bro. Yeah. Nigga, this nigga 50 Cent, he be on. But 50 Cent be, he just be, he be, he be talking shit about every fucking body, bro. Uh, Orlando Brown, niggas thought he was crazy. Fucking Cat Williams, they thought he was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. it's fucking sad, bro. Now, the main comments on this diss track read, this shit is whack. Others point out that he's grown up in such a privileged household, he can't even make a good diss track. They comment, wow, we're really making it out the gated community with this one, fam. Another comments, snitched on himself and hit us with this itsy bitsy spider flow. Yeah, he does like a nursery rhyme beginning. They praying on our downfall another time again. After the rain for the sun, I'm shining again. That's right. Don't bust no U turns because we ain't forgetting shit. And then uh, others say, when you make a poem in primary school and then add a backtrack. In the lyrics, like I said, he talks about the feds missing the second home in Miami they allegedly purchased. A lot of netizens found that hilarious, saying, how do you snitch on yourself in your own diss track? Yeah, like that. LOL, he yeah, said, don't old. forget the house next door. The feds just raided two of their house. Yeah. And he's making a diss track on the public as well as the feds. The feds? Yes. 
what is going on right now? Yes, which a lot of people have said, you know, cops, okay, maybe. Big O, you the know feds, what I'm talking about. Nobody really fucks with the feds. Like, that's just not something you do. <laughs> Especially when you're like being investigated for a RICO conspiracy, yeah, racketeering. This is, like this is not gonna age well. The feds the they might overlook a lot of things, but they will not overlook things like racketeering. Yeah. People comment, how are you gonna make a diss track where you're not really dissing anybody, only name dropping and then self snitching? This sounds less like a diss track and more like a confession. Yeah. Others are commenting, Yeah, well, we did pick a side and it's not with the oily diddler. A lot of people think it's just so bizarre. It really just shows how untouchable they think they are. Because why would you tease the feds like that? Yeah. Gene, the former bodyguard, states about the song, it's like he put another battery in the feds' back. Don't play with the feds, bro. You might think it's petty, but it's not. You do not agitate a lion with a pork chop. And that's what that kid did. Mm. Others have commented, Christian Combs said, pick a side. The feds said, pick a cell. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So he's in a lot of hot water. Justin but was. Where yes. is he right now? He's actually just seen partying with his girlfriend. Oh, okay. So he's still yeah, out right now. There's no criminal charges against him. It's just the civil lawsuit against him with Grace. Yeah. Then you have Chance Combs, Sarah Chapman's daughter. I watched a lot of interviews with Chance Combs in there, and honestly, she seems really, really smart. Like, she just turned 18. She's very beautiful. It seems to have a good head on her shoulders. Then you have Delilah and Jesse, the twins. Yeah. They were born five months Dang, after Chance. It seems like all the three of them are very close the in twins. age, but also That's just in they bond. They're, They're currently aspiring to be full-time models. They joined their father on the stage for the 2023 VMAs, where he's saying, I'll be missing you which is a song we will cover yeah. in part three because it is in uh, reference to a murder Nikki. that he is allegedly, Nikki. the conspiracy is yeah. he was involved that's, in. That's the song. These that's like one stunning. of the first I mean, people have said they look just like their Nikki. mother, Kim. They also seem really down to up. earth, and I'm sure it's, it's very difficult for them to navigate all of this right now. I believe the two twins are still minors yeah, until December, if I'm not mistaken. So navigating all of this while being so young, I'm sure is very hard. And then you have the youngest, youngest, like maybe two years old right now, I think. Love Sean Combs, a baby girl that Diddy shares with a woman yeah. named Dana Tran. Some sources describe her as a model. Other sources state she's a cybersecurity expert. Regardless, she was born in 2022. Yo, he actually just posted an Instagram there. photo for her while he's in prison. Yeah, he like posted an Instagram photo of the two-year-old baby. Yes, it's her birthday. It was recently oh, her birthday. How does he? How does he I'm sure someone, Instagram. maybe someone was, did it for him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nobody really knew that Diddy was even expecting another child. In fact, most netizens thought that he was in a interesting relationship with young Miami of City Girls, but he just like randomly posted on Twitter, I'm so blessed to welcome my baby girl, love Sean Combs into the world. God oh, is the no, greatest. Man. Yo, how many baby mamas? So I will say out of the seven kids, aside from Christian and Justin, who have been named in lawsuits. How old are they now, Sean? Oh, um, I think Justin is 30. Christian is 25, 26. Oh, Quincy's okay. even older. Okay. And then Chance just turned 18, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, so particularly with the girls and the youngest kids, there's rightfully a lot of sympathy out there from for them from the public because likely they don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And if anything, I'm sure even a little bit of that controlling behavior from Diddy was in his parenting. It couldn't have been easy just growing up with the media, the press and... It's definitely not easy for them now with, unfortunately, the whole situation. And I don't know how good of a father Diddy was. They state yeah, that he was a very good father, but Diddy once told a reporter, somebody gave me multiple choices early on, have a smooth working relationship, have a personal life, or be in the music industry. I chose be in the music industry. He also told another Vibe reporter once, anything I've wanted, I can say I've gotten it. Diddy was born in Harlem. His father was allegedly an associate of a legendary heroine kingpin, Frank Lucas. He was unfortunately murdered in the 70s, which means Diddy and his mom, they're left to fend for themselves. And Diddy says in an interview, he remembers waking up in Harlem one day. There were just so many roaches on my face. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be somebody. He later states in another interview, there was 15 roaches on his face, to which he says, people was like, how do you know it's 15? I was like, if you have 15 roaches on your face, you would know it was around 15 roaches on your face. He says, my first job was a paper boy. I was a bus boy. They wouldn't even let me be a waiter. Do you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a waiter so bad, but I just always had that hustle. 
Even being a paper boy, he said he's not going to do it like everybody else. He states that when you're a paper boy, you get your predetermined route. You make about a dollar per paper you deliver, but because you only get a certain number of houses in your route, you're capped out. But Diddy thought, what if I'm not capped out? He goes, reaches out to all the paper boys in the neighboring areas. I have a proposal. You let me deliver your papers for you. You do nothing and we split the profits. Sure, you could make a dollar a paper and you're working all day, or you could make 50 cents a paper and do nothing. Hmm. He said, even though his dad was murdered when he was a toddler, quote, even if we don't know our parents, we still have their DNA in us. We have their genes. I have his hustler's mentality, his hustler spirit, his drive, his determination, his swag. He starts off and he later tells Forbes, I ain't fooling around. I'm building assets. He says, I had to go in knowing I'm going to be the greatest. I still have to say that to myself and I have to believe that at the end of the day, I'm going to be the greatest. At first I was shy. Then one day I realized that shy shit isn't going to get me anywhere in this life right here. In this world, sometimes people say I'm cocky and arrogant, but that's what comes with it. He also talks about obstacles and how he loves challenges. He says, it's like this mountain is three times bigger in front of us. It's got a volcano coming down, rocks, avalanches. And you're like, yo, do you want to climb this mountain? Or do you just want to go find shelter and ride this thing out and just die? And he loves money. Maybe he gets it from his dad, but he loves money and he's skilled at making it. He was estimated to be worth close to a billion dollars. His estimated earnings in 2023 alone are ballparked to be around $90 million, making him Forbes number 14 highest paid entertainer after mm. Jay-Z, Kanye West, the creators of South Park, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Reese Witherspoon. What? That's How? Weird. Like, what, what? Where's the money coming from? Like shit. He had a tequila <laughs> line that he got a big payout uh. for as well. Yes. I see. Now, just to give you context on how much $90 million is, that's about a quarter million dollars a day. He's also very skilled at enjoying his money. He owns that private jet that cost him $60 million, a real estate portfolio nearing $100 million. He owns... Right. So he has a yes. $60 million private jet, yes. right? Last time you say the jet disappeared from the navigation system, right? The tracking, yes. Like, oh, it was recently spotted in New Zealand. People saw a picture of it because it's matte black and it's, yeah. Oh, so it, like thing. what happened? He just removed it from the system? Yes. And his lawyers are telling the judges that he's willing to sell his private jet to show the judge that he's not at flight risk. So please give him bail. The judge said no. <sighs> he owns a massive painting that he bought at auction for $21 million. It's an original Carrie James Marshall. It's incredibly beautiful. He owns original Andy Warhol's Keith Haring's. There was one time he was being interviewed talking about how excited he is about being a father and Kim was pregnant with twins. Conan O'Brien was like, are you registered with uh, Kids Are Us? To which Diddy looks slightly offended and tells him he's registered at Mercedes, which is likely a joke, but still very extravagant nonetheless. He had a famous butler once who would walk around just holding a umbrella over his head. His name was Fonsworth Bentley. Yeah, he would just like walk around with this umbrella. And, and recently, prior to his arrest, Diddy just announced that he purchased two of the largest cannabis companies in the country for nearly $200 million, making him the owner of the largest black-owned cannabis company in the U.S. Mm. Wow. I don't know what's going to happen to that now. But he would also th say things like, I don't want to make the most money. I want to be known for giving the most money away. I feel like I've heard that a yeah. few times. SBF. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which he's sharing, is that true? Sharing the sale with? Yeah, sharing the same unit with Diddy. The crypto fraud. SPF crypto, big yeah. man. He's yeah. in the same Damn. detention center in Brooklyn. And they actually share the same attorney, which we will cover in part brand. four. Maybe they're best buds. He said in a previous yeah, interview, yeah, I'm the one driving right. around in the Rolls Royce with this hat turned, going down Fifth Avenue with the music booming in the back, walking into Gucci, shutting down the store, buying everything at the motherfucking same time, driving up to Harlem and giving out $100 bills to homeless people. I'm not going to lie to you. I had a taste of wealth and I was going to do anything I could to protect that. I just remember these days of roaches crawling on me and it's just like, I need to focus on this money right now because nobody else has the opportunity that I have. Which again, not a controversial statement, but a source close to Diddy, almost alluding to that, says that to Diddy, it's not even just about money. It's about power. And ultimately it appears that Diddy wants power. They say this about him. There's a certain narcissism, an attitude of objectifying not just women, but all people and wanting to be with other men who enjoy moving people around like chess pieces. Who said this? An insider source.
But Diddy claims that mm. the only thing that got him to be worth close to a billion dollars, the credit goes to being a father. <laughs> Fatherhood taught him patience and grace. Oh, wow. And I'm sure he believes he is a great father. Which is why his son, Christian Combs, is getting sued by Grace, the yacht stewardess who claimed she was essayed by Christian Combs while working on the Victorious Yacht December of 2022. Grace was 25 at the time. He was 24 at the time. And honestly, her lawyer had it out for Christian. They write it in the lawsuit. Defendant Christian Combs is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. Unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Defendant C. Combs, Christian Combs, who is seemingly taken after his father and the family business of reckless partying, drugging others, sexual violence, and other illegal conduct. She alleges, paraphrasing here, but... Like the lot of the whole family were weird. The lawsuit alleges a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and A-list celebrities were rotating on the yacht. Staff were often treated with disrespect. It created an extremely hazardous environment. Also in the lawsuit, there's this really weird part where Grace alleges in the lawsuit that she was tending to the yacht. And I guess the family, they were all playing a game. I don't know who was present during this game, but it seems that Diddy and his mom, Janice, were present, Janice Combs. And I don't know if Diddy was dared, but somehow the conversation in the game leads to him taking off his pants so that his private parts are exposed and he's sitting right next to his mom and he does it. In front of his mom, Nick? Hmm. Which is definitely strange. Side note, a lot of people think his relationship with his mom is strange. A new clip has surfaced where Diddy is with his mom and they're both hooked up on IVs which Cassie oh, has included in her lawsuit that after freak offs, they would need to get IVs the next day from all the drug usage. I'm just saying that's a parallel. It's been alleged well, by Cassie that, you know, and the these could be completely different things. You know, not everyone who gets IVs is, do freak offs. So in the video, he introduces his mom and kisses her on the lips, which is inherently not sexual, I guess. It depends on each person's boundaries. It's just weird. He also apparently brags about his mom and taking his mom to strip clubs. So there's that. Oh, yes. Gene, the former bodyguard, says the two of them have a fascinating relationship. He brings up an allegation that has been circulating recently that Diddy's mother owned a modeling agency <laughs> when he was younger. So after I ain't gonna lie. Look, I know some people, but how many of y'all still kissing y'all parents on the lips, dog? I know some people don't have a problem with that, but I ain't gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, maybe when you're like, Fucking six, seven, eight. I, I feel that way. I feel like when you get to a certain age, like you should not even a grown playing. ass man. Come here, mama. <laughs> like, bro, there's something fucking wrong with you. Hell no. Nah. Hey, on, on, on Love is Blind, I was watching the show, man. Yeah, the power couple that that I was like rooting for them, bro. When I saw that nigga give his mama a kiss, bro, I was like, damn, you still kissing your mom, bro. At this age, I mean, for I'm some, like, no, hey. no, no bullshit. For some ages, it is a normal. It is it, for some families, it is a normal thing. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I know, but it's just like, but fuck. It, it's like an error in my head, nigga. Nigga, when you like forty, nigga, you married. I mean, he's not married, but it's like you got partners at all, like, bro. God damn, bro. Now, nah, his, his mom definitely. She taking his mom to strip club and all yeah she doing the free yeah I, I think kid uh chick kiss is is, is okay like, even to the day you die like but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. lips to lips bro it's like damn bro i'm like <laughs> i already got my own wife nigga the fuck mama hold your lips and like yeah, get yeah, the fuck on like yeah that has been circulating recently that Diddy's mother owned a modeling agency right, when he was younger. So after his father was killed, they needed to make money. So she opens up a modeling agency. But the allegation is that perhaps during the day it's a modeling agency, perhaps at night it's sex work. The, some further allegations allege that she was running a full on brothel out of their home when Diddy was a kid. Gene, the former bodyguard, just brings up what he claims he saw and what he thought was strange about Diddy and his mom's relationship. One, he claims Diddy would describe his mother in odd, potentially sexual ways, bragging about how she can stand up and bend over and put her palms on the ground. But it was, I guess, in a sexual context, it was weird. What? Allegedly. Two, they would kiss on the lips, which is evidenced by the live stream. Three, he alleges his mom would wear the same white nail polish that Cassie alleged Diddy would like to see during freak offs. Which, side note, if you listen to part one of this four part series, you know that another alleged girlfriend of Diddy's went on a podcast to allege that she was abused by him. She also had on white nail polish. Some people have pointed to the fact that young Miami of City Girls, when she was dating Diddy, had 
white nail polish on. Hey, but it might not be no incense going Keen on. Keen continues to allege. What's crazy to me is that him and his mother had this, I don't want to get too deep, man, this Oedipus complex thing. Side note, the Oedipus complex is a theory that children will feel feelings of desire towards their opposite sex parents. For boys, there are unconscious sexual attractions towards the mother, which creates a hostility with the father and now, vice what versa. What right now, Rod? Whom they just what view same sex parents as their rival is the theory. Gene continues, I'm looking at him and his mother on the couch. Both of them are getting IVs after one of Diddy's parties, allegedly, because I wasn't there. I wouldn't know. My whole thing about this thing is I'm not saying she was ever at a freak off or she was ever at that type of party, but you can't tell me Miss Janice Combs, who is always at the regular parties, didn't know nothing about the freak off parties. That's what Gene says. Gene says he's not saying anything because he doesn't know. He didn't uh... see anything. But he does seem to have a complicated relationship with oh. his mom if Gene's stories are true. But he also says that he's very aggressive towards his mom. Sometimes he heard, allegedly, heard Diddy just snap at his mom. Didn't I tell you to stay out my motherfucking business? Going off on her, allegedly. But I digress. Grace alleges in her lawsuit that one night Christian Combs came via tender. So tender is a small boat that takes people from the boat to the land, from the main mm. yacht to the land and back and forth, like a little water taxi. He comes middle of the night, she's on the night shift. So there's only like two people working the whole boat at night because mm -hmm. most people are asleep. Yeah. He seemed already high from narcotics and alcohol. She claimed that he was ordering her to pour him shots while he was playing Me and You by Cassie. Yes, by Cassie Ventura. This is in 2022. This song would have been over a decade old. And this is his dad's ex-girlfriend. Wow. And they had broken up by this point. Yeah. So anyway, that night, Grace alleges she noticed Christian being more attentive to her, which she didn't like. It didn't feel appropriate. And he keeps insisting that she take a shot with him, which is not the most uncommon thing. Although she didn't want to, she thought, well, if I just take one shot, he's going to let me go back and let me do my damn job. But no, she takes a shot and he keeps asking her to sit beside him, help keep him company, which of course is not in her job description, nor does she want to. She remains polite and insists on leaving, but he's getting more aggressive, grabbing her arm violently, insisting more shots, more shots. This is nighttime. She barely has any crew members. She can't find help right now. And she's starting to feel the effects of this one shot. She thought it was spiked. The situation escalates. Grace alleges Christian starts touching her on her private areas over her clothes and tried kissing her on the neck and face and everyone everything and everyone starts blurring around her she feels drugged christian and his attorneys have denied the allegations and have called the lawsuit lewd and meritless whereas diddy's attorneys have stated that they haven't seen the claims yet but quote but we can expect the same kind of manufactured lies but a lot of netizens are having a hard time believing that when there is an alleged audio clip transcribed into the lawsuit. So I'm assuming her attorneys have the actual audio that has not been released to the public, but it's been transcribed into the lawsuit. The audio clip was recorded by Rodney Jones, a producer, Lil Rod, that was brought onto the yacht to help create Diddy's newest album that was released in 2023, ironically named The Love Album. Rodney Jones was allegedly ordered to record everything. Ordered by who? Diddy. Record what? everything for the creative process, but also potentially for a Hulu show. Like a camera and everything? Tape rolling type of thing? Just on his phone. Okay. Because I guess they could include it into shows or into music uh -huh. videos. Okay. There's an audio okay. recording of the alleged essay. Christian is... Yeah. And Christian is telling Grace, yo, it's shot o'clock. Are you talking about... This is happening... A night, that, the first night yes. that he came on? Yeah. And Little Ra was recording? There's an audio recording. I don't know if he was in the room, but he has the recording. And I guess he gave it to Grace later. Oh, like he had cameras and stuff yes. set up that's yes. recording? Whoa. Now, Little Rod what will sue Diddy as well, which we'll get into right after oh, this. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. And Christian says, yo, it's shot o'clock. Grace responds, "I'm no, I'm not doing shots, Christian. Everybody, we got to take a shot. I'll just... um." Put the, put the ledge. No, 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 take the whole thing. No, you take it as well. Christian tells her, no, 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 take the whole thing, take the whole thing. Grace keeps saying, I'll take the whole shot if you take it as well. So it's likely she said this because she thought it was spiked at this point. Mm. So it's like, you take the shot from the same bottle then. Yeah. And he said, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not taking nothing. Please, please take the shot. And she asks, are you drugging me? That is terrifying. Yeah. And he responds, take the shot. Hey, yo, play another beat one time. 
So I guess maybe the rod is in the room. Someone's in the room and they start playing me and you in the background by Cassie. Grace tells him, I can't. I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, darling. No, nah, we need you. I'm going to stop. I have to go. I have to go. Honestly, I'm already losing sleep. I have to go now. You're the best one on the ship, though. What do you mean? Who's going to replace you? Who's going to replace me? Which sounds like a threat of firing her, if I'm not mistaken. Or it could be who's going to replace her tonight. I don't know, but it's that's what the transcript shows. Grace continues, excuse me, you don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. If you want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Later, Grace states again, well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Wow. This part wasn't recorded, but she recalls later that night, Christian kept asking her to find him a place to sleep, which there were no more spare staterooms and cabins, and he refused to go back to shore because I think him and Justin had their own place on shore. Mm-hmm. So she leads him to the cinema because sometimes people would crash there. So she leads him there and sets up a spot for him to sleep, which is her job. And he allegedly blocks her from exiting. She states he became aggressive and started cornering her, groping her. She was pushing him back. He took off his clothes and revealed his private parts while allegedly forcing her to try and get her to go down, pushing her head down. She fought him off and finally runs out of the cinema. And immediately the next morning, she complained to the yacht's captain, but the captain did not care. What's wilder is Grace alleges that Diddy's employees, his chief of staff, who is right now being compared to Ghislaine Maxwell. Who's chief of staff? Diddy's chief of staff, like okay. his right-hand woman oh, okay. is being, a, being compared to Ghislaine Maxwell which we did cover the Epstein case, by the way. She found out about it, allegedly told Diddy, and instead of Diddy being a good father like he claims to be, and set the record straight, go to the police, figure it out, discipline Christian, turn him in, whatever it needs, he just pays off the captain to keep him quiet and not cooperate Grace's story, if you will, and eventually she was terminated by that captain. It does appear that Grace likely has a strong case considering there's audio from that night, but that brings us to Rodney Jones, the producer that gave Grace the audio. He has also filed a lawsuit against Diddy. His lawsuit alleges that he was brought on to produce Diddy's 2023 album, The Love Album, Off the Grid, and his life has fallen apart since. For over a year, he worked to help produce nine songs on Diddy's album. He states that Diddy always wanted him around to record everything in case he has a spark of creative genius i guess i've been working on an album the love album off the grid by diddy and it's grammy nominated right now as we speak um i should be celebrating but the truth is i'm not taking this album on has required so much time diddy will request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done and, and the truth is we'll be up for days he would live with Diddy for months, spending holidays with him, leaving his family to work on this. And he claims because of Diddy's insistence of having everything recorded, he now has hundreds of hours of Diddy's footage and audio recordings. And many of those allegedly depict them engaging in seriously illegal activity, which I mean, the feds are going to have a field day with those files. Yeah, if I he know, really does I have know those that nigga went through some trauma. Shit. That's so fascinating. Why would Diddy want him to do that? Maybe his like, head's getting way too big. I think so. Wow, we need to see all them clips, man. Well, the police did a One of the most hard. intelligent people I know is a polyglot, aka she knows multiple languages fluently. She even dreams in each language whenever she travels to that specific it's country. Yes. It's like a Shout super out to cool me. secret Shout superpower. I'm going to fill up my cup real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, and it's quick a quick bathroom break. Quick she talk about break. me, guys. She talk about me. Uh, you were set of stone, man. Oh, you mean Didi? No, nigga. Th th don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this shit, well, nigga. You look like him, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Don't ever compare me to that nigga. <laughs> fuck wrong with him, chat. I'd fucking I chop my fucking arm off. <sighs> but yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? The Rosetta Stone. You know, she said she had got a friend that know multi-languages. I wouldn't be fond if she wasn't talking about me. You know what I'm saying? I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty upset. You know what I mean? And there y'all go with the asses. Stop, DNA. Stop! That nigga, wait. 
That nigga in federal prison. The alleged criminal activity, according to the lawsuit, include drug usage and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, ketamine, GHB, marijuana, and mushrooms, Hmm? displaying and distribution of (laughs) unregistered illegal (laughs) firearms, Diddy providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers, Christian Combs drugging and assaulting a woman, Mr. Combs, Diddy, detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with famous pastor T.D. Jakes to do damage control. Oh, yeah, T.T. Jakes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he told Lorado pastor? allegedly that yeah. he used yeah. it to like, do damage whoa, 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 What did she say he did? Which I personally... In Let me see. Miss nigga, pa- I used to Mr. listen to that Combs nigga. Diddy detailing most, how he planned to leverage nigga. his relationship with famous pastor beverages to mine unregistered illegal firearms. Diddy providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and workers Somebody christian asked, combs asked, drugging you know. and assaulting a woman mr combs diddy detailing oh, how he shit. planned to leverage is that what some nigga asked is that thanos <laughs> let that let that sink in and nah, play the video look like play the video, play the video. that nigga look like thanos no nah, christian the combs diddy providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers christian combs drugging and assaulting a woman mr combs diddy detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with famous pastor td jakes to do damage control oh yeah td jakes yes okay yeah he told little rod allegedly that he uses that nigga look like to do damage control Dude, Which I, I got my personally, in my opinion, I would find that a little believable with his constant bringing up of God mm. while he's doing allegedly very demonic stuff. Yeah. He also alleges in his lawsuit that young Miami of City Girls, I would say her cousin, essayed him. That actor Cuba Gooding Jr. essayed him mm. and assaulted him. That redacted rapper, the the name is redacted on the lawsuit. Redacted rapper on the yacht Hold was consorting with underage girls. Redacted R and B singer in Diddy's L A home was consorting with underage girls and sex workers. So these are the serious criminal allegations that he's bringing forth in his lawsuit. He claims he witnessed the Combs family allegedly, potentially, maybe shoot someone which we will cover that more in part three but rodney jones alleges in his lawsuit throughout his time living with mr combs oh mr God. jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by mr combs a brief list of allegations further oh, include yeah. now again these are allegations diddy would shower and walk oh. around naked while forcing rodney jones to work in the bathroom which is already odd rodney said that he told the chief of staff Christina Coram, who is now being compared to Ghislaine, that he was very uncomfortable, but she just downplayed it all as friendly horse playing. That's just Diddy's way of showing he likes you. What's horse playing? Like, you know, boys will be boys. Horse playing is like play fighting. Wow. I mean, I wouldn't even give that excuse if I had a son who's seven, let alone a middle-aged man. Ronnie said his idol in life has always been Stevie J, the musical artist, which, by the way, again, these are allegations brought forth by his lawsuit that is publicly available online. I don't know these people, which Diddy then allegedly shows him a clip of Stevie J having intimate relations with a man without a condom. There are screenshots included in the lawsuit. What? Of the video? Yeah. Whoa. I don't know. Look, it's in the lawsuit. Rodney says Diddy was trying to use this as a way to get him to do what he wanted to do, which was sexual activities with other men. According to him, Diddy said, this is normal practice in the industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. He states that Diddy promised him to win a Grammy for producer of the year if he engaged in gay intimate relations. Another allegation is that during Thanksgiving 2022, young Miami of City Girls, her cousin was present at Diddy's gathering. And he alleges like he was using body itch, nigga. Nigga, he said that shit and that shit immediately got me, nigga. My fucking, I I don't even feel comfortable, nigga. Hey, hey, that McMill shit starting to get. Yo, yo, wait, yo. Nah, is that video? Well, nah, nah, that video has been debunked. By who? Some nigga, I don't know, but I know that shit is not even real. Nigga, that nigga has not said anything about that video. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He said he, pay, he said he will pay. Uh, he was. He said he'll pay a nigga a million, like any private investigator, a million dollars if they can actually find proof of, you know, what I'm saying what happened. That's aged in gay intimate relations. Another allegation is that during Thanksgiving 2022, young Miami of City Girls, her cousin was present at Diddy's gathering. And he alleges while he was using the restroom, her cousin just burst in through the room 
to the bathroom and starts groping him. He believes Diddy sent her to do this. She begins performing oral on him where he alleges he pushes her off and exits the bathroom, but she's not done. He goes out to the main area where everybody else is. There's staff, there's Diddy, there's allegedly young Miami there. And she just starts undressing, attempting to straddle him in front of everybody. He states once again, he pushed her off. He further alleges that he was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to pleasure Diddy. It's unclear if it's the same setup of a freak off, but it sounds kind of like it. He once states that he woke up dizzy and confused. He was naked, looked around, and he was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. It's unclear what happened that night. Rodney Jones alleges that once Diddy allegedly threatened cannibalism on him, question mark. The lawsuit reads, Mr. Combs Excuse would switch me? up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face and informed Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his own mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. The lawsuit states that at parties, Justin the eldest biological son that he mm -hmm. has with Misa Hilton and Sean would have minors under the age of 16 present. Um, nigga, what? Did that nigga say he's going to eat his face? Did I hear that right? Bro, he, yes, he threatened that nigga with cannibalism, meaning that motherfucker about to eat a motherfucker, bro. This nigga eats people? Nigga, that's the Illuminati. That's the Illuminati shit. Nah, damn, them niggas did some ritual that did come to people. He eats people. Nigga, what? No way this nigga eat people. He said he's willing. The fact that he he, he kill his mom to get whatever the fuck he wants. He said he's willing he to think, kill his mom. Yeah, bro. yeah. He said you think I ain't gonna eat your motherfucking ass? This nigga is trying to eat his fucking face off. What? Nah, this is insane. That he has with Misa Hilton and Sean is twice to harm Mr. Jones. The lawsuit states that at parties, Justin, the eldest biological son that he has with Misa Hilton and Sean would have minors under the age of 16 present. He alleges Diddy would force them to all drink the Delian tequila, which he believed to be laced with ecstasy. The presence of underage women allegedly made him very uncomfortable. So, so he has all the recordings. So he got all the videos. Yes, cool. I don't know if all of these instances were recorded. However, I will say, believe all victims, but in the court of law, there are some cases that are inevitably going to be stronger because there's a lot of evidence that comes with it. Mm -hmm. His lawsuit has lots of pictures, so I am, mm. I'm leaning towards the belief that he does have a lot of footage. Mm. And I'm leaning towards the belief that he is working with the feds. Now, some people actually speculate that Cassie's lawsuit was not the one that kickstarted the fed investigation. It was his. That maybe he had started working with the feds, filed his own lawsuit, and the feds publicly started getting involved. Mm. When was his lawsuit filed? A few months after Cassie's. He brings up more of like the RICO conspiracies, the racketeering, which the feds take very seriously. Whereas for Cassie's, I think it's more focused on the sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which obviously sex trafficking is more serious, but um, you know, America. The presence of the Yo, underage woman man, made Mr. Jones shit. very uncomfortable. He attempted to leave, but Diddy went as far as stealing his car keys to prevent him from leaving. He was forced to take shots and he woke up naked with a sex worker next to him. Now, this side note, he alleges horse. that Justin Combs would partake in okay. those freak offs. He has also included pictures of Diddy kissing who he claims are underage women at his party. I say alleged. The picture is there, but it's unclear if they're underage. Mm. The lawsuit continues. It is no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated for females and other bottles designated for his staff, his artists, and himself. This fact was detailed by former artists and bodyguards of Mr. Combs. Mm. Mr. Combs would even have sets of Moe champagne bottles for his artists and a set for women. He also alleges that Diddy's chief of staff instructed employees to lace liquor bottles with ecstasy and other illicit drugs, and all the staff would have to walk around with pink cocaine, which is a mixture of ecstasy and cocaine in their pockets because Diddy would freak out if he didn't have pink cocaine within arm's reach at all times. That's what he alleges. He also likens the chief of staff, Christina, as Ghislaine Maxwell in his lawsuit. He claims Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak off parties and his house parties. Due to his treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and untouchable. Like I said, in the lawsuit, there were those photos of Stevie J, but 
do that with what you will. I don't know. It, it It's very unclear what he's doing in the screenshots. He's shirtless. It's unclear if you can even say definitively if it's him, but, but that would be a crazy accusation to make if you didn't believe that to be 100% true. Like speaking from Rodney Jones's fact, because even including that, he must believe it's 100% true or it is true mm -hmm. because think about the repercussions. Rodney mm -hmm. Jones also alleges that Mr. Jones was forced to watch as Mr. Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. He also shared that he was the one responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. The one with J-Lo. Wow. Mr. Combs has made it clear that his head of security had the power to make people and problems disappear. Lil Rod would say about Diddy, he's a monster. He will do whatever is necessary to get exactly what he wants. He doesn't take no for an answer. And on top of that, these guys are trying to steal my publishing. I can't go for that. So I'm fighting back. He's a fighter, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put in this fight. I got to do it for myself, my rights, and most importantly, my kids. Uh, Here I am standing up for justice for what I believe is right for my life and I'm being punished for that. I've had many nights and weeks and months of self-exit thoughts. It's the music that has kept me living all my life. He said he's paranoid about what could possibly happen to him. He's hired security to protect him. He go. said during a recent performance, my anxiety was out through the roof. I saw different guys backstage I didn't know and I got scared. I wondered where the security was. It made me very uncomfortable. It's not a good feeling wondering if someone is there to attack me. If all alleged in the lawsuit is true, it is clear that anyone who crosses Diddy should be very scared. Yeah, that's a scary. November 15th, 2018, 47-year-old Kim Porter is found dead in her home. Her goddaughter found her in the bed at around 8.30 a.m. She assumed she was sleeping in that morning, but then checked again at around 11, three hours later, and she hadn't moved. She freaked out, called 911. Authorities rushed to the scene. They see Kim laying motionless in bed. Next to Kim's bed on her nightstand, bottles of water, sports drinks, Pedialyte, as well as what appeared to be a bowl of tomato soup. Oh, she's sick. She was declared dead 11.40 a.m. The call came in as a report that someone was in cardiac arrest. Kim had apparently not been feeling well for the past few days. Mm. Honestly, weeks. It said that she had pneumonia or symptoms of a flu. She didn't know at the time. She was just not feeling well. She tried to get it treated with saline, vitamins. She went to bed early the night before she was found. Alarmingly, she told someone that she had a mild streak of blood in her phlegm when coughing. But it does not appear that it came back. She was on antibiotics, IV fluids, and then unfortunately she passed away. Diddy says the day Kim passed, he, quote, jumped into mommy mode. I sent people in every direction to try and make sure the kids would not hear about it on social media or the news. I had to get the girls from the school. I had to find Quincy, who was on set in Atlanta. Christian, who was on a plane. I had to get his phone disconnected so he couldn't read it on the air. There was screaming and crying when I heard the news, of course. But I had to ask myself, what would Kim do? I was scared. I mean, I was crying out to God and to her. And immediately, almost immediately, Kim's voice kicked in. And I could hear her saying, make sure you take care of my babies. He would later say that day, that day turned my world upside down. Three days before she passed, she wasn't feeling well. She had the flu and she sent the kids over to my house so they wouldn't get sick. And one night I was checking on her and she was like, Puffy, take care of my babies. She actually said that to me before she died. He held a memorial at his home where Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, French Montana and other high profile celebrities were in attendance. He says this about his relationship with Kim Porter. Whenever I was around her, I felt like God had his hand in it. I always felt like God had sent her. Nobody could love me the way she loved me, especially as, you know, as crazy as I acted. I mean, she loved me through some real shit. He would later state in a public statement about her, God broke the mold when he made Kim. There was truly no other woman like her. God sent her to teach me something, which side note is already kind of an odd statement that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. No woman exists to teach a man something, but I digress. He continues, <laughs> there's levels and dimensions to love and especially love between a man and a woman. There's this place that almost goes beyond friendship. It's like where two people actually feel like a level of responsibility to love this person forever and total trust. And I was like, man, you had it. I'm not saying I would do anything differently, God willing. Um, I just wish I had more time, you know? I look at my life as I got a second chance. I'm on my second mountain. At her funeral, he would say, 
some people in your life, it's going to be irreplaceable. Kim, we're going to miss you so much, but I'm not going to miss you too much because I'm not going to let your voice inside me stop talking. I know you like to talk to me a lot once you get on those rants. And I just want you to know that I'm going to be listening. What is Kim's official cause of death? Her cause of death is considered natural. Yeah, what? we'll get to it. So he does all these tributes to Kim. And this is going to be um, kind of That's strange when you listen to the next part of this series because he does a lot of tributes to a lot of people who pass, which I guess is normal if you're an artist, but still. He would even dedicate a track named after her on his new album that was released in 2023, The Love Album, where he says this, it's like I'm going through a midlife crisis, being a single father raising three teenage girls, but it's love and nothing else. I truly feel like this is God's way of making me into the best human I can become, and it's life-changing. I always said that I couldn't make a hit record unless my heart is broken. It's just like a vulnerable state that you're in. When I lost Kim, it broke my heart forever. A close friend of his said about Diddy's tribute to Kim, after Kim, he was trying to find purpose and nothing feeds his soul like music. He also says about therapy, therapy probably likely really saved my brain because when you have a genius brain, <laughs> it's also a crazy brain. Of course, there are questions of how someone just passes away like that, seemingly out of nowhere. She was healthy, suddenly caught pneumonia, which if you have pre-existing conditions, if you are of older age, if you have low immunity, if you have other health complications, pneumonia could be fatal, but it's not considered this deadly thing. Mm. So it's just not as many people pass away from pneumonia is like it's treatable, right? Yes, is the netizen sentiment. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying nobody has fatal yeah. or life altering consequences from pneumonia, but it's just not typically known to be this very terrifying fatal condition. It was later determined that Kim Porter had died from low barb pneumonia. The manner of death listed on her autopsy is natural. Detectives told the media that police do not suspect foul play. In addition, Diddy has been extremely cooperative. Some netizens were agreeing with this sentiment, pointing out how prior to her death, she seemed like she was in a good place with Diddy. In honor of his 49th birthday, which was a week before her death, she posted on Instagram, Happy birthday, Diddy. On this day, a genius was born. May you continue to be the driving force of energy that God created you to be. Thank you for giving me the best gifts of life, our children. But a lot of others don't think that she died of a natural death. But who are we? We're just people on the internet. Some have stated, you know what else gives you pneumonia? This is a recent conspiracy lately. Accidentally inhaling baby oil. There are lots of conspiracies that there is no way that Kim died of pneumonia. Gene Deal, the former bodyguard, said, that case needs to be reopened, man. That case really needs to be reopened. He alleges that Kim was found dead with bruises throughout her body. And interestingly, he claims nobody knows to this day where Kim Porter's phone is, which is odd. He also alleges that it's strange. This was in 2018. So they have the cloud. They have all these things. Why didn't anyone go in and try to investigate her last text or where her phone location is? Why can't they find my iPhone? He also states that her tablet and computer have gone missing since they found her dead, which I'm not privy to any specific information like this. I'm just uh, giving you his allegations. Uh, uh, he says, find my phone. Nobody tried to find her phone. He's asked, you personally, what do you think happened to Kim Porter? Jean Deal responds, I'm not a medical professional, nor was I an investigator on that case, but I don't believe that an individual with her, I want to say financial status, would lay up in that house and die of pneumonia without a doctor or some kind of medical person responsible. Nobody Someone with enough, enough money that they could get the, half the hospital the to come to the house. I think there may have been some, I guess, foul play. Because if you knew what I knew, he put Kim in a gold casket. Then he has security, 24 hour security at the funeral home so nobody would go in there and take Kim out of there. I think they should reopen her case and have an independent pathologist look at everything about her so she can rest in peace. He also brings up how many sources state that she received a massage because she wasn't feeling well the night before her passing. He points out, that's so weird, who gets a massage when they have pneumonia? You don't want people right. touching you. If you have the flu, you're like, don't touch me. I wanna lay here. Yes. Nobody move my body. He also brings up, again, these are his viewpoints, but someone needs to look into if they used baby oil during the massage is what he states because there are now allegations circulating that the baby oil was laced with something. Yeah. So you feel like she was murdered? I feel like there was a lot of foul play in her death. A lot of foul play. Yeah, He's asked, but why would someone want Kim Porter dead? He responds very ominously. 
There's a couple of women in this industry, and for their sake, I will not mention their names. Listen to me. There are a couple of women, probably more than a handful or two, but I know about four of them that knows everybody's dirty secrets. And if those secrets get exposed and tell what some of those guys and some of these people were really doing behind closed doors in those boardrooms, in and out of the closet, their life would be in danger because men wasn't men and women were acting like men. And that's all I'm mm. going to say. Mm. That's crazy. But he does not believe the Amazon book is Kim's diary entries or in any way related to Kim. He says, if you've seen the excerpts from that book, then you know Kim didn't write this book. If you know Kim and you've been around Kim. Wait, so this guy, Jean, Jean, what's his name? Jean, Jean Deal. Jean Deal was a bodyguard during the time of uh, Kim Porter. Yes. So he was actually a bodyguard for a lot of famous musicians and executives. He was well known in the industry. He doubled as a cop. He worked as a child oh, abuse see. investigator as well as a probation officer for most of his life. So people really liked him because he he's very clean cut is the vibe. Mm -hmm. So he gets hired by Diddy when Diddy is dating Kim Porter. And he says that Diddy never really ever hit Kim Porter in front of him, but he would hear from the other bodyguards. So for him, his perception, his allegation is that Diddy only does things with people he thinks he can get away with. Mm. And for him, because he has a job as a cop, he's saying, if I see Diddy hit anyone, I'm arresting Diddy because I'm not trying to lose my pension. Right. I'm not trying to lose my job as a cop. Mm. So he knows That's that I'm not going to put up with it. He said that Diddy once cussed out his mom in the car mm -hmm. and he went off on Diddy and was like, you don't talk to your mother like that. Wow. But then he later heard, allegedly from other bodyguards, that Diddy was like slapping his mom in the face. But it never happened when he was there. Wow. That's crazy. He's been pretty vocal and his story has never really changed, it appears. So a lot of netizens find him credible. Mm -hmm. But again, that's an opinion. These are allegations. He says, and if you've been around Kim, if she was going to do a book, she wouldn't have included all those things, talking sexually like that. She's got two boys, two girls, and she was a mother first. She wasn't going to say the stuff that she was saying and about Puff in a manner that was written in that book. It seems to me that whoever wrote the book was really out to get Diddy and did it in whatever means possible. But disrespecting Kim and who she was as a mother, I don't think that's right. I think she deserves better. Side note, it does not appear that Diddy has filed a lawsuit against Gene Deal, which a lot of people think add to his credibility, which is, again, just an opinion. One netizen comment reads, the fact that Diddy hasn't yet filed a lawsuit against Gene Deal with all the things he said about Diddy is the most telling realization of all. Mm. Some people now believe that Kim Porter's death needs to be reinvestigated, but they also believe that she's the one that wrote that memoir on Amazon. Again, I can't dictate what others believe. I'm just telling you what's out there. Some believe that that memoir is real. They point to an interview that was done in 2012, so mm. six years before her death, where in the interview, Kim talks about wanting to write a book. I will say it doesn't appear that she's referencing a memoir or any sort of tell-all book at all. She says, But I've been in the business and been around the business. It's become a phenomenon. It's a culture. It's a, you know, it's just for me, I wanted to present something beautiful and package it and almost like an ode to them to what they've done. Some netizens think that she's just using that as a cover to write a memoir. Some netizen comments read, if this book is false, how come the author hasn't been sued? I mean, I really hope it's fake, though, because there's a lot of crazy shit in there. Another comment reads, the more that I listen to folk coming up against the book, the more I believe in its authenticity. Others referenced Chris Todd's interviews and they say, this man got too much confidence not to have proof that Kim wrote this book. He got some type of proof somewhere because he just has too much confidence. Another says, what if a close friend of Kim's had the actual book and flash drives, but is just too scared to come out because they're too interconnected and is using this man as a front? Guys, think about it. Another comment reads, this is a lot of shit to make up. I can see some things being true, but who knows? Then there's another group of people that, yes, they want her death to be investigated, but they don't believe that she wrote that book on Amazon. They comment, that book at first glance, this reeks of a shamelessly fabricated cash grab attempt. I don't know. It just seems a little too convenient. And the stories that I've seen excerpts of appear to be someone just wildly producing sensationalized garbage and toxic gossipy bullshit. I hope for the sake of any potential victims that these things did not occur. Another one comments, this book seems like it was written by ChatGPT or something. <laughs> Others have been very happy that it's been since pulled from Amazon stating, I'm glad they took it off Amazon. The nerve of that fraud. RIP Kim. But fueling conspiracies oh, around Kim's perfect. death, I'll be sure Kim's previous partner, the father of her first child, has made a statement. In it, he basically insinuates two things. 
One, that Diddy might have something to do with Kim's death. And two, that Diddy might have put him in a coma. <laughs> okay. Wait. Who, yeah. <laughs> There's a wait, lot going who, he on. He is... Quincy's dad, artist. He's a well-known artist back in the day. Okay. I'll be sure. Yeah, there's a lot going on. But in an Instagram post, he states in 2024, Kim and I talked right up to a few days prior to her demise. She was in good health and we were in such a great friend space, reminiscing about old times and celebrating the news of our son's accomplishments. In a nutshell, Kimberly was allegedly taken from us because she was set on a course to accomplish what Miss Cassie Ventura did by igniting the bonfire, which brings us here today with the avalanche that has brought Satan to their chambers. He also hashtags FBI, DOJ, Department of Justice, as well as the CIA, DEA, NYPD, LAPD. He has called for a, quote, investigation into an entire group of individuals who worked at or around the residence of Miss Kimberly Porter. Because, quote, the individuals involved in this matter may also be connected to also concealing the alleged murders of several prominent artists. He's alluding to Tupac and Biggie. Biggie which we will talk about in the next one. Side note, I'll be sure, interestingly enough, believes that Kim was working on a book to expose Diddy. That's why she was allegedly taken too soon. Before she mm. could expose him in a book, and then later someone stole her computer sense. is what he alleges. But he doesn't think that that Amazon book is the book. Yeah. Because everyone's saying the way that the book is written is just not the way that Kim Porter speaks. Yeah, and then like things, there's like factual inaccuracies. Even the bodyguard doesn't think it's the book. There's just so many people that have come out against the book that are against Diddy. And Al Bishir goes on to allege that he had a health scare in 2022. This is actually true. He did fall into a coma and the vice president, Kamala Harris, even wrote him a letter. Yeah. They're all very what? well connected. Yeah, he's a very prominent artist and I believe he does activist. He's an activist on the yeah, side as well. That's kind of sus, bro. Wow. Yeah, so he's been invited to a lot of state dinners and so is his son, Quincy. That's yeah, kind of yeah. sus. Yeah. Now, he collapsed in July of 2022, fell into a coma, wakes up, it's October 2022. He was in a coma for around three months. To this day, it seems unclear what exactly caused the coma, but he kind of implies that perhaps Diddy was involved. He announced his documentary and states, you will really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. Later, he's asked to clarify that ominous statement and he just, I mean, someone asked straight up, did Diddy try to kill you? He just responds, please understand very carefully. Me talking about situations for more than a decade and a half. And then all of a sudden, everybody woke up like, whoa, yo, we thought you were crazy. But what I'm not is a liar. That I am not. All I did was give the science and I was ignored, laughed at, ridiculed. But whatever, that's okay. My God is so much bigger. My God got me. Mm. So he's saying that he's been talking about Diddy for like a decade? Yes, but I don't think so publicly. Mm. Because he's actually seemingly a very non-controversial person. Mm. Yeah. He also has had lingering health problems for a while. He did have bariatric surgery. He suffered from renal failure, amongst other things. So it's very unclear what caused the coma. Okay. But a lot of people a lot of people believe him because he just seems to be very credible. He hasn't been this controversial figure for most of his life. But others point out, I'll be sure had a child with Kim Porter and formally dated her. He did not take an active role in his son's life and Puffy ended up unofficially adopting and raising that child. So they're saying, because you're not a good dad, you don't deserve to have an opinion here. Another netizen comments, what does that have to do with Puffy and what he might have done to Kim? Some question that perhaps Al wasn't in his son's life because Diddy wouldn't let him be. But that's just another pure speculation. Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard states, Al's a real good dude. Do you know what I mean? So if Al is saying something that's happened to him and Puff has something to do with it, trust and believe he's going to have some evidence to substantiate that, <laughs> that Puff had something to do with it. Either he gave him something or sent something his way. It, I mean, at least so far, it seems like everyone around them are very vocal about how shady yeah. Diddy is. I haven't really heard anybody who's backing Diddy's story? Have you seen many reports? Um, no, but that has been a question of why aren't people backing Diddy? Yeah. And so yeah. the the biggest thing is all of go. his friends have gone quiet. Yeah. A nigga got to go. Some people bro. think it's because right, the, all the conspiracies. Yes, of, because um people are saying if you're not in some sort of tape, if you're if Diddy has nothing on you, why would you not come out and condemn his actions for the hotel footage that has been proven that that is him beating Cassie? Yeah. Because you might not have known that as a friend mm -hmm. and to come out and say I don't condone this, I don't endorse this. This is not the type of friend that I would ever keep in my quarters. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, that's one. But also even like the people around in their yeah. families and people who work with him, like just just people in general. Yeah, they're very quiet. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like everybody. in regards to Albie Shore hiring security, which he has hired security. Gene says, I don't think nobody would be paying for security unless they thought their life was in danger. Same thing with Rodney Jones. Mm. While many agree with Albie Shore, some have comments. I guess this is his chance to get back in the news. What? Yeah. One party that is clearly not on the same page as Albie Shore about Kim Porter's death are Kim's children. They have released a joint statement, mainly in regards to the book that has been circulating. They took to Instagram to state, we have seen so many hurtful and false rumors circulating about our parents, Kim Porter and Sean Combs' relationship, as well as our mom's tragic passing, that we feel the need to speak out. Claims that our mom wrote a book are simply untrue. She did not. And anyone claiming to have a manuscript is misrepresenting themselves. Additionally, please understand that any so-called friend speaking on behalf of our mom or her family is not a friend, nor do they have her best interest at heart. The cause of her death has long been established. There was no foul play. Grief is a lifelong process, and we ask that everyone respect our request for peace as we continue to cope with her loss every day. We are deeply saddened that the world has made a spectacle of what has been the most tragic event of our lives. Our mother should be remembered for the beautiful, strong, kind, and loving woman that she was. Her memory should not be tainted by horrific conspiracy theories. Another one of Kim's longtime friends took to Instagram to write, I'm going to say this as loud as I can. Kim Porter never drafted nor wrote a book, memoir, or a manuscript. Kim would never do such a thing, and that's the honest to God truth. Another states, Kim Porter never authored a manuscript and any claims suggesting otherwise are entirely false and fabricated. The baseless pages in the book not only misrepresent Miss Porter's lived experience and legacy, but also continue to cause unnecessary distress to her loved ones. Kim's former attorney has also spoken out saying she would be turning over in her grave right now. Kim never even gave an interview about her private life. She would never do that to her children. She had plenty to say, but she would never do so publicly. There would be no amount of money that could make her write a memoir. She would never do anything to hurt Puffy's reputation because she has children with him. Mm. It is impossible that that is her journal. It's comical. She never even spoke that way. She never wrote that way. She was articulate. She was classy. She would never write something like that. There would be no need for her to do that she also states i guarantee she was not part of those freak offs i think she would have cut off his penis if he ever proposed that to her which kind of goes against what others have stated but it's up for you to decide what you believe right one that is in comments read two things can be true at the same time there can be legitimate questions about kim's death and also her children can be upset about the tabloid media and weirdos on the internet making a spectacle about those legitimate questions it's a terrible situation they have my sympathies so i as i was researching there's a lot of ai generated videos that have been going around about this case it's not even just people asking for an investigation into her death and talking about the allegations that have been brought forth about Diddy's alleged behavior towards Kim Porter and how that could have contributed to her passing in 2018. But just like straight crazy rumors. Mm -hmm. Like she was, I can't even repeat them. They're just so, so I bad. I see, I see. Yeah, okay. Another reads, I feel for the kids, but Kim's death should absolutely be looked at differently in hindsight. Diddy is a long-standing Hollywood conspiracy that has pieces falling into place left and right. There's going to be an intense amount of speculation because, to be honest, there has always been. We just have some proof lining up now. Mm. But another commentator writes, leave this alone. Leave the kids alone. Make him be resting in peace. Another reads, these poor kids are losing everything. Let them grieve their mother in peace while the rest of the world is watching their father's downfall. Even if two of these kids aren't underage, they still deserve some privacy and respect. Another reads, God damn, I'm so tired of the conspiracy addicted dipshits who think they are the world's greatest detectives. Half the people in this thread need to get off the fucking phone, man. Now, I will say that um, a lot of these comments, people are defending the kids. And I think a lot of the times... Everyone is mainly defending the girls, the twins. And when they are defending Christian, a lot of them don't know that he has a lawsuit against him. So there, there's more discourse once you read more replies of them mm. being like, oh, I, I didn't even know that he was part of it because uh, they were writing about him in a way that he is purely innocent. And he is innocent until proven guilty, but mm -hmm. just letting you know, there is a lawsuit against him. That's why but I others are angry commenting. We are talking about a man who is accused of multiple murders and domestic violence and other atrocities, but speculating about the suspicious death of the mother of his children is where we cross the line. 
Kim Porter's father has made an interesting statement to Daily Mail. He says, when I saw the video of what he did to Cassie, I was disgusted. I don't really have much to say beyond that. Everyone's innocent until proven guilty, I guess, but the truth will come out. He never states that he wants another look into the death of his daughter, but he does state that the previous investigation was, quote, a load of crap. Another family member of Kim states, I remember Kim as a little girl. She was just the sweetest little girl. And I remember how she grew up to be so beautiful and talented. But I saw the change in her when we visited her out in California when she was with him. She changed. Something wasn't right. Now I feel in my spirit that he's guilty, but justice will have to take its course. If she was my daughter, I would be demanding that the investigation be reopened. So with that, Christian Combs has been in the news again because just two days after his dad's recent court hearing, the one where they set his trial date to May of 2025, two days after that, he was spotted partying with his girlfriend, pouring shots into her mouth. Which is just not a good look because... Like at a nightclub? Yeah, but again, mm. not a good look. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, it's a little odd. Some people are defending Christian Combs saying, y'all need to stop it with judging this family for real. Y'all have convicted the whole family over hearsay. And once again, when you read more replies, you'll notice that people are reminding everyone Christian Combs has also been named in a civil lawsuit. Other comments read, let him live as he's already lost his mother. I did the same thing at that age. Everybody deals with family crisis differently. Others comment, what do you expect from him to do? Cry in his room? Others have pointed out that his girlfriend's nails are painted white. And some just think it's just not very tasteful or smart for him to be partying. And this is part two. Part three will be about the 13 people who have mysteriously died around Diddy. There's yeah. also a very, very alarming right. pattern, like I said, of just the strange ways he responds to death. And finally, part four will be the so-called Diddy's List and all the internet allegations, as well as there have been some new lawsuits that have been filed against him, including um, Diddy being listed in a lawsuit filed against Kanye West. So there is a lot going on right now, a lot of new developments and discourse every day. Stay tuned and be safe, and I will see you in the next one. Bro, what the fuck, bro? Oh my god, but but yeah, that is it is crazy. It is crazy, man. Everybody on YouTube, bro, we try to do Mango Monday every Monday, but these next few weeks, bro, we're not gonna be streaming. Just want everybody to know that before we end, shit, bro. Yeah. Well, that's like the Kim Porter death, right? I don't know what to believe. But it is it do sound weird. weird. Yeah, it sound weird, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. You know, like, one of the one of the signs of like well that in my opinion that I always like pick up when somebody's like trying to cover their tail or when they're lying is when they cooperate with the cops like extremely. You know, <laughs> somebody of Diddy's like I'm not trying to assume shit, but like Based on the type of people that Diddy is associated his life with, um, that we've known from to like a high degree was Biggie. Biggie didn't really, you know, you listen to his music, he don't you you just know he don't really fuck with cops. Mm -hmm. So I I just can't look at Diddy and be like, oh yeah, this man loves cops. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, he could co-op, he'll cooperate with cops. You know, and just seeing and hearing that shit, like he was just willing to cooperate, like extremely, like it's just like ah, Sus. sounds like he's trying to cover his ass, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Type shit. It's funny how like some of these shits, but I don't even know, man. Like I be hearing these information, I'm like, yo, all and, this shit going and on. Each lawsuit has a pattern of like yeah. near him near, like it, there's like there's a consistency in it so it's yeah. like it's hard to like really say oh yeah they're these wick these victims are lying because yeah, they, they all they all damn near all, down yeah. the same you know what i'm saying so it's like nigga you can't just oh i don't know nigga but i believe every single thing these niggas are saying bro yeah. and but any nigga that is willing to fucking sit here and say I don't, nigga. If I gotta kill my mom, nigga, yeah. that nigga would do anything. Yeah, if that nigga's willing to cuss his mom out like that, yeah, bro. cuss his mom out, damn near slap his mom, or uh, allegedly slapped his mom. 
Bro, that nigga would do anything, bro. And, the and I, I, I in your face. one guy before this whole thing was unleashed, right? Before this whole shit is unveiled. Remember a couple years ago when this nigga dressed up as Joker? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, Halloween? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, I swear to God on my life. I was like, there's got to be some type. Because he broke. There was like a fight that broke out uh, with another artist. I, I don't know who it was. I don't know. I don't think it was Don. I think it was one of Don Tolliver's artists or Don Tolliver himself. But it I don't remember, but I remember he got into a fight with somebody and he mm -hmm. said some shit. I was like, there's a reason why this nigga is dressed up as Joker, bro. Joker is a fucking a, a, a crazy like a yeah, like that, like, but he's smart when he does mm -hmm. it. Like he's like one of the smartest villains ever. That's why Batman has trouble with that nigga. That's yeah. why Batman always because he, he outsmarts Batman even. Yeah. And Batman is a smart nigga. Yeah. So it's like I seen that shit years ago. I was like, yo, there's a reason why this nigga is dressed up as Joker, bro. And he says some shit to that nigga when he when it was in a fight. He said some crazy shit. And I was like, oh yeah, this nigga is different. He's different, bro. Yeah. He's different, bro. And ever since then, I was I always it's just crazy how this shit came out now. And like I believe every single accusation, bro. Yeah. Just off me seeing that shit. That's crazy. A woman years literally ago. said this nigga shot her right in the fucking nose. And this thing still ain't do no time. Yeah, bro. Like, like bro. Yeah, that shit is crazy. I believe everybody just off of what I've seen years ago. Like years ago, mm -hmm. I even had it in my head, like, oh yeah, this nigga is doing some shit, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that shit to myself. Yeah, I, will. I hope they air all that shit out, bro. bro. Please, man. I bro, I I am just expecting to be absolutely mind fucking blown bro hey man chat y'all be ready for may 2025 there is going to be some crazy information i'm telling out. you it's probably going to arguably go down as one of the craziest cases next to epstein see yeah. the, the reason why the, the reason why epstein shit died down so fast is because he wound up doing shit to himself in in jail if this nigga can make it till next year and make it through trial, but I promise you, it's gonna go down as one of the craziest. Niggas still don't believe that nigga dead. It's gonna man. go down as one of the craziest shit. That nigga Epson, people still don't believe, like, cause uh, he, they, they believe he faked his death. So I feel like with Diddy shit, his shit gonna be even worse because he's famous, bro. Yeah, like nigga, and you like mm -hmm. one of the faces of. And it's hard to get out of his situation because nigga, there's recordings. So, mm -hmm. nigga, nigga, ah man, I just know. Chat is going to be a crazy, that's going to be a crazy time right there. Yeah. But um, if y'all are all on YouTube, man, and y'all want to see us, you know, more often, you know, follow our uh, yeah, socials, follow the, the Twitch, follow the Instagram. The Discord, we be in the the Discord. Man, I'm always messing around with y'all in Discord, man. Yeah, we be uh, fucking um, Patreon. We was watching that. the movie like a couple... What was it, a couple days ago? Yep, oh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night. But we was we just we did we had a movie night last night. I was supposed to continue it tonight, but I'm probably gonna continue it uh probably I don't know. I, I'm gonna let y'all I'm, I'm gonna put an announcement up on Discord. So if y'all want to join Discord, you know, come through. 